Good evening, everybody. I want to welcome everyone to the town board work session work session for February 11th, 2020. If everyone can please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Let's take a moment of silence, uh, remembering two very special people tonight. Uh, Nelson Mandela, who was freed 30 years ago today in South Africa. And here in Yorktown, remember Lynn Agello and the Agello family. Lynn was a uh, teacher at St. Patrick's Elementary School for 30 years and uh, passed away this week. And we remember her whole family in our prayers. Thank you. Uh, Lynn was a special person for. No, this is a work session. All right, we have a rather robust agenda, and we're going to jump right into it. Uh, our first item on the agenda tonight is Landmarks and Preservation Commission. We have Lynn Briggs. Lynn, would you mind coming up? Is you, if you have members of the commission who would like to join you, thank you. We have chairs right here and here. Are you alone or somebody back up? Oh, hey, Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Oh, there. Oh, Nancy. How are you? I haven't seen you in a long, long time here. Thank you. Okay. No, no, we're here. This morning. <laughs> no, here. So, Lynn, we got some really exciting stuff that we're going to be talking about tonight that I am <coughs> very pumped about. So, why don't you, right, if well, you could, we, we, if you could just brief us on. Do you have copies of this? or Because I made copies. Yeah, why don't you pass okay. them out for us? Right. Well, so I think there's some in the binders, actually, okay. for everybody. Yeah, you can um, go this way. All right. Yes, thank you for the opportunity to let us share these with you. Um, what we'd like to do today is present three resolutions that we'd like consideration of the town board. And I know this is a work session and we're exploring these, but um, let me just walk you through the three. If you have any questions, please jump in. The first one is to um, ask your help to authorize a name change for Landmarks Preservation. We want to rename ourselves to the Yorktown Heritage Preservation Commission. And the reason for that is over the last two or three years when we've been doing this work, we often get people come up to us at different events and whatnot and say, you know what, mm, landmarks, limiting, too restrictive. I don't know if I want to get involved in that. And we've all experienced that um, over the course of time. So we thought, why not rename ourselves to Heritage Preservation Commission? Because it's a broader, more relevant concept, and it better describes what we do, frankly, okay? <laughs> Um, so what we want to do is actually name ourselves something that supports the notion of preserving our heritage, whether it be natural heritage, built, historic, and cultural, the assets that we have, and we are replete with them in the town. So there was a phrase, I'm sorry? Did you see whether or not that's the legal name um, that you, you were able to I, do? Well, I went to the state and asked okay, them to clear it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I went to the State Historic okay. Preservation Certified Local Government people okay. we work with, and That's they said we're good to go. Perfect. As long as we get local approval. Of okay. course. Okay. Um, so there's a phrase that we kind of fell in love with. It says, heritage is all things that make up our story, tangible and intangible. And as we value them, we must protect them. And it's that sort of framework that we use to want to rename ourselves. So when you think about it, we've been doing the broader con context for a long time. Right. Okay. So in addition to traditional landmarks and homes of distinction, we've engaged ourselves in a lot of public outreach programs, not the least of which is lectures on our one-room schoolhouses, our disappearing architectural legacy. Uh, we've been involved in a lot of community events like San Gennaro for the Fe Yorktown Festival, and we conducted the first ever preservation uh, month celebration at the Halix Mill property with Dr. Brennan a couple of years ago. And then, which houses the first Yorktown post office. And then we've also launched the first preservation symposium at Hilltop Hanover Farm last year that many people came to. We had a great attendance on that. So the bottom, and, and we've helped Alice celebrate our 230th birthday with tours of the Croton Heights Hamlet. And we've got two programs underway where we're having youth of the community actually help clean up grave, uh, graveyards and grave markers. Mm -hmm. Shrove Oak people are working with us, as well as an Eagle Scout project. And then we're also creating something we're very excited about is, is a number of our tours, digital tours, we can use on our iPhone of all of our historic sites. So 
we feel like what we do is consistent with the notion of heritage versus simply landmarks. One okay. of the things that I was going to ask the people that I'm working with, and you're one of my committees, and thank God I'm better, is, is that you make a presentation about what you do. Because okay. I think that your group has particularly given us some really, really good um, presentations. I think that visually it's better than you're sitting here talking about it. Sure. So I'd like you to... Uh, Absolutely. Happy to do that. I think that. it'd be great. Okay. I and I think there's some opportunities that we're going to talk about shortly that I think will roll nicely into uh, that Lend type of presentation. Lend themselves to that. Yeah. That's a good... Thank Absolutely. you, Alice. Absolutely. Okay. So basically, we did get clearance from the state, and we think that if we're called Heritage Preservation, we have a better shot of, of executing our mission. So we'd like your support with that. I don't okay? remember that. Okay. Any, any questions from the board on this particular item? Oh, this is really great. Yeah. Okay. I, I, knew, I knew that it was coming down the line. I think mm -hmm. it's a great idea. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Next. Second one is we would like to ask your help to adopt the term cultural heritage tourism as one of our primary strategic drivers. Um, it's a term that's now used throughout a lot of municipalities to revitalize their communities and essentially relates to people uh, wanting to travel places that have artifacts and activities that authentically represent the stories of the people that live there, both past and present. And so... Um, it, it also, cultural tourism affects a destination where people go. Mm. And when they're interested in these things, they'll go where they are. And that includes attractions, monuments, landmarks, museums, cultural, uh, culinary experiences, galleries, you name it, theaters, festivals, and neighborhoods that have significance culturally. Oh, so, John Tegeter. <laughs> John? Come down. John, you're being John. summoned. John, come, come, come. I was looking for you because she's talking about <laughs> something that I'm going to work with you on. Sure. Yeah, please sure. grab a chair. Grab a chair. Leave the blue lines open, please. Leave the blue lines open, according to the man, the the man behind the curtain. Behind the... So if you think about our history, I think we'd probably agree that not it's not fully understood, appreciated, or even leveraged, okay? Yep. And Agreed. it embodies a whole lot of things, all the way from the indigenous people who were settled here to the Stefan Van Cortland Manor uh, days, our er early agricultural beginnings, uh, the Revolutionary War, slavery, abolition here, Civil War, mills, commerce, dams, aqueduct, emergence of education in the one-room schoolhouses, another part of our heritage, and the impact of the railroad, as John well knows, and then the tourist boom that came about with resorts and colonies that evolved and, and, and emerged um, in our history, the loss of farms and urban renewal, there's so much here that we can celebrate and render more explicit. So we think if the board can really say, yes, cultural heritage tourism is one of our primary strategic and economic drivers, it makes a lot of sense. It will enable what we do a little easier. Yeah. Actually, uh, you know, I, I meant to bring it up to you, Lynn, when I saw you, so this is appropriate that we're seeing you. I was listening to News Radio 88 the other day. I think it might have been Sunday morning when I was getting ready for the sun's breakfast. And they did a piece on the Pines Bridge Monument. Oh, and I saw it. Okay. Yeah, I saw it. It was online. Did they really? Oh, it was it online? The whole article online about it as well. Well, they had, sent it to me. Right. And they had, I believe the gentleman is actually I think on the, it to you. I, I, think, I, yeah, I think he's I a trustee in Buchanan. Yeah, it's, it's Dwayne, Dwayne Action Dwayne Jackson. Jackson. Dwayne. Yeah, Dwayne, yeah, Dwayne was talking about it, which I, I sort of was like, well, why aren't they talking to, he's very sweet. to us? Yeah. Oh, he's a really great. nice guy. Oh, he's yeah. such a good guy. Uh, and, and he was he's at actually, the Veterans uh, He was at the Veterans Senator Council, we and he, he's also one of the people when they had the he car can't. packed with explosives down in Times Square. Hence the name, Action Jackson. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you know, one of the things that, that really I loved when I first started was the museum, and I hope you got more involved with Adele over there. Um, you spoke about it today. Yeah, and yeah. I remember I brought a Native American to the museum because I wanted to make sure the room was authentic. And he went through the room, and he said, you're fine. Good. Um, John has a project that I told him I really want to work with him on. And, again, it's part of that tourism. Um, do you want to talk about what you're going to be working on? Bring him the mic. <laughs> yeah, John's been busy. The, the I, I've been keeping trail. John busy. No. Yeah, well, we've talked for a long time about this very thing, and, and in particular doing a historic trail. I always wanted to start with a Revolutionary War trail because we have some very 
important history here in Yorktown yes, for that, did. and we have plenty of sites to make to have enough mass to actually, I think, do that, which would entail, um, you know, obviously uh, educational materials at those sites, mm -hmm. and you know, maps and so forth, and guided guided towards. I don't mean guided by people, but um, guided with uh, materials to take you around all of those sites. Right. That could be expanded to all of the other history that we have, of course. But that's something that I've always that's thought great. that we should do since yeah. we have so well, much of it here. Wouldn't it be, I think, interesting for all of us to get together here at a meeting that is video? Because I think there are a lot of people out there that would probably, you need more people than you probably already have to help you out. Correct? Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be an effort. And there It'll probably be an effort. may be some, even some scouts that might want to help mm -hmm. with us. Yeah. But I think what you want, this is totally exciting, Lynn. Great. Right. Well, yes. totally okay. And part of what John was just talking about, I think, dovetails into the next item that you wanted to bring to us. Right. Um, so the next and final resolution is, um, you may recall that back in October, we invited a woman named Connie Kiho, who is the executive director of RW, Revolutionary Westchester 250 initiative. And she's been driving that, doing a fabulous job. But essentially what we saw there was an opportunity for us to leverage our Revolutionary War history sure. and tie into sure. the county. So this resolution has to do with the fact that the United States Congress passed in 2016, I think, Public Law 114-196, which says that the U.S. government, through a formation of a commission, is going to commemorate and celebrate our independence. Oh. And so they've it's legislation that... The Congress is following. And so what I learned from all of this is, one, the state historian, Devin Lander, he's indicated he's going to support this with a lot of support, or a lot of meetings and awareness um, creation. We learned that the New York State Parks and Recreation people, they're on board and they want to get going. The Hudson River Valley Greenway folks are on board. The County of Westchester and Department of Tourism, Office of County Executive, are on board, and then the Westchester County Historical Society, all are supportive of this. So we've got a whole right. lineup of people committed to do this. So what we're proposing is the town of Yorktown form what we call the Yorktown 250 mm -hmm. organization, and it would be a committee that would literally partner with, this count, with the country, the state, and, then, and the county, and then municipalities. We've already connected with Cortland to start working with them to really do the same thing, which is uh, in the next six years, which is when the celebration is, 2026, we got a six-year horizon here. We can actually really do a great yeah. job laying out a master plan with all the programs nice and initiatives and partnering totally, with everybody. Yeah. Totally great. Yeah. So that's what that has to do. But we'd like to have this committee be formulated as a subcommittee of, of our of group. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, that's we'd like your support with that. Council. Yeah, Lynn, thank you for all you do. And, and um, John, with all your knowledge of the, the, the railroad line, when Alice and I did the 230th birthday for the town of Yorktown, okay. these guys here they were, fabulous. They, they were, were, were <laughs> awesome. They, they, were, they did the, the heavy lifting that had to be done, and I didn't think Lynn thought that she was going to get as many people as she did riding in those tours, right? We had to push people away, actually. Right. <laughs> and then John did an awesome job with the, uh, the old putt line, um, amongst other people that did stuff why Ed and I were embarrassing ourselves playing baseball and falling and so, sorts <laughs> of things. By the way, I just looked at that video the other day and I saw you falling to the ground yes, as you attempted yes, to yes. leave home plate. I have to tell you, Tommy, that was one of the more, the reason I liked it was because as soon as we put out the, the message that we needed help. We got it. The road built up. Yeah, yep. It came running. The road great. up. Yep. And I think, Lynn, I think you guys, this is so, not only is it key for us, but also for the schools in Yorktown. Yeah. It's important that they get to understand the history of mm -hmm. our community. Because we have a, a you know, as a clerk, um, the clerk, the records that are in that office, that have been in that office, are absolutely amazing. Um, which takes us from a farming committee right. community with slavery yep. to where we are today. today. Yep. Yep. So yep. I think this All right. is fabulous. Man, I want to, thank you. So and I want to, my. I have a question for you. Oh, sure. How 
how currently year current year will be talking here 2010 or because you know last 15 years before I became a councilman I was chairman of the museum I have spent day and night over there and every picture you want I have it very nice uh, exhibition done right John was there all the time and we have uh, <coughs> honor the veterans exhibitions and technology and science and it was really really the guy came from West Point and this service very nice you know so we have all how far we gonna present here up to current or uh, yeah, I mean, we want to go back to our very beginnings and, yeah. and really to, uh, build now, that picture. One of the things we want to do is actually build an authenticated history of Yorktown and get it supported by citations and research and all of that, a definitive history of our town. We talked about digitizing our, uh, there's a digital effort that you and I talked about earlier today. Yeah, we want to, well, there's a lot, digita digitizing our, we don't have an archive that particularly captures all of our records yet, so we want to get a digital archive going. And we do use, I think it's picturing our past. Yes. Or we use that. But it's not right. accessible to people. So yeah. there's... Um, see, you have an... I, I think that we have to open your eyes to stuff that you may okay. not be aware of that has been digitized. Mm. The because clerk's you know. office has a uh, probably the oldest records okay. that are in town that I'm pretty right, sure good. you haven't seen. Okay. The ones that are in the room. The microfilm was digitized yeah. through yeah. laser fish. Well, all right. We can oh. use yeah. The yeah. So we can, yeah, but we yeah, can, that's we, all things I'm that we can. We were just going to, there's a grant that we can get where we can do a digital archive assessment and just inventory everything we have and then decide what might make sense from there. So when I had reached out to some reenactors to see if they were yep. interested in doing yep. something, but a thought came to mind sitting here. Uh, Yorktown has living history in, in yes. school, yeah. Christy yeah. Pasquale, I think it is. Yep. That would be like a phenomenal project yeah. for them. Maybe a project each year building up. Uh, we, yeah. 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 Right. yeah, no, that's perfect. And actually, one of the uh, people who live over in Huntersville came to me the other day, and they went to Francis Tavern, a celebration last, I think it was the 330th uh, year, 300th celebration yeah. of Francis Tavern last fall. Yeah. There were a couple there, the Enslows, who use 1700s musical instruments <laughs> and actually have written songs about the history of the 1700s. And they're now coming to Yorktown on the 17th of October awesome. to perform at the community church. And we're gonna, they're going to present a story about spies in Yorktown. Huh. That's so, awesome. Anyway, that, that's we'll do a lot of advertising yeah. for yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's great. So anyway, well, listen, thank I appreciate you very much. it. I, yeah. I do want to try to keep us as close as we can to schedule. We're already over. Yes, but great. This Sorry is about great, that. Lynn. Yes. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank we can you. talk keep us all day about this stuff thank with you. you. So I appreciate right, my, it. I'm going to help. <laughs> I just got to get better. <laughs> Lynn, thank you and Barry, your group uh, for all you do. Thank you. Barry thank Liebman you. up next, Yorktown Stage. I do want to say, Alice, I'm very glad to see you here tonight. Larry, this is after the history, the current. I'm excited about this. Yeah, we got some great things that we're working on. Yeah, the current. <laughs> How you doing tonight, Barry? I'm right. doing okay tonight. Good hey, to Barry. see you. How you been? Thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you for you. inviting. Of course. You know, I, I still my son still is running around the house saying buongiorno to everybody because he went to Pinocchio. <laughs> at the stage. And you know what was awfully nice? You were there the the Cub Scout evening. Yeah, I, I was in the back, but I wasn't in the front over there. I came yeah. an hour before and then that I was really a good night. Nice. Yeah. 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 Car oh. Carol and I wanted to come, but my goddaughter had a different uh, so agenda. Many. <laughs> So they do. Whenever so excited awesome. about it. I don't. It's amazing how you like. I guess we'll do it again next year. I hope but so. I'm going to hopefully get involved and in, see if I can save some money. Oh, so they Barry, overpaid. what do you, Barry? Tonight we're talking about a liquor license, and I want you okay. to explain some of your ideas behind that. And well, uh, it was on a list of many things 17? that we need at the theater. But we have 15 minutes, so you have 15 17 minutes. Items. I can do it in one. <laughs> a liquor license will make us money. Mm -hmm. um, we can. We had two comedians at our uh, theater last year. I don't know if anybody saw them. Uh, both of them were attended by this young and up-and-coming comedian, Anthony Rodia. Mm -hmm. He's so hot. Um, <laughs> it's like somebody asked me, can't we get Maniscalco? I said, nobody can get him. He's too hot. But Anthony Rodia, it was hysterical. He was there. I think 200 people came to the first one. His following came to the second one. There were 350 people. Awesome. And unfortunately, we just were happy to have him, so we didn't even take a cut. So we were we, we just gave him a straight rental. Um, he's willing to come back at some point and bring all his minions with him. I mean, these Great. people have followed. Yeah, they do. Every one of the people who came said, do you have any wine or, or, or anything? I said, no. 
you know, we've talked about it before. The boards before, that's been one of the first things we talked about starting way back in 1998. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I say talk to, I've spoken to every supervisor basically about it that I could speak to. Some I may have missed. But it's an idea that can make uh, money. And it's not only money for us. I could care less. Well, I don't see it as just money, but it's in the overall experience. Well, I think it's an experience, but the town can change. split in the proceeds. And I agree. I think when people go to the theater, and even, you know, I've been in the theater where there are young kids, and, and, and yeah, they're there, and people are, are having wine or whatever. I kind of think that is one of the places where they should have a glass of wine if they want to have it's a glass It's only wine and beer, by the way. I, That's yeah. all. Yeah. I was going to ask that question. No, it comes, it's just the, the license is actually a cabaret. Yeah. Like, it comes right. with mm -hmm. lick, with uh, alcohol, but we're not interested. Oh. We're not getting just a bar. Well, no, they have a specific. Wine and beer. Wine and beer. Wine alone for wine and would beer. be fabulous. I think that's a nice yeah. thing to have for it's people who are maybe going out. It's a great thing. And they expect it. I mean, people would expect when they go to the theater to have a I mean, a bottle of wine costs ten dollars. Right, right. Well, your how about every? How actually. about this six six drinks well, in there your, your for ten dollars? I mean, that's a lot. The, and the other theaters that you're competing with have it. Everybody yeah, exactly. has it. Right. Exactly. So it, everybody it, has yeah. it. Okay. And the other theaters, one of them I think has a liquor, but I don't know that that's that important. I don't think wine so. and beer, beer wine is and enough beer, I think is... to enjoy the experience. Correct. Right. You Correct. know, how people like a little glass. Of wine. I'm going home to a glass of wine <laughs> after this. So I like wine. You know, it's just. No, it I makes think sense. it's very nice to do when you, you know, it, if we can get it even done. Even if it's, people expect that when they're going out, you mm -hmm. know, they want something nice when they're going out. You know, maybe different for the two o'clock matinee for a, like Pinocchio. Maybe that's a little different. Right. Right, but certainly. Yeah, I don't know that so, we need it for Pinocchio yeah. or oh, but Lion King. Kids of, is coming up. We have the sound of music right. coming. We have right? the sound, you of, have music. The sound yeah. of music. Sound of music coming. High school musical, which yes. is family oriented yes. over the summer. Yes. Right, and hopefully we'll have Beauty and the Beast or some other great show right. in uh, November. Then we have what we'll talk. A, but I think, I think again, I think it goes back to I think not just for me. It's not just the revenue. It's the experience. Yes, and, yeah. and so we're yeah. trying to enhance people's experience. I'd like to bring more people here. Candy. I, oh, we always have candy. candy. He's got candy. But we talked about getting people from other parts of the county up here. And if your competition Because everybody who it. comes here enjoys it. They stay here all day. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's an appropriate thing to do. Well, I did some research. I mean, the license is, is an expense. I think I have to apply. You do, and that's what I was going to tell you. Is, tell me. Uh, I looked at it. Will... I have to apply. Which is, right. I don't and have I a think problem with that. I'm already fingerprinted. What the board can... What you got to go, have to go through the cards. Yes. Yes. But the, at the SLA, I have to do but the first have to application. Agree we have to, to make it part of their policy to right. do it. And it, it, sh it said the, I don't even have to own the premises. I just have to show them a right. lease. Right. And um, but I think the, as a landlord, we have to authorize him. Yes. To make a resolution. Exactly. Right. No. Yeah. We'd have to do a resolution to authorize issues, this. Right. There are some issues. Very I, similar to the Par Three Golf Course, what we did authorizing yeah. them to apply to the DEC. So it's, it's and that's very a sports similar. license. I couldn't find any of them that help any any of the clauses that had anything to do with us, except cabaret liquor, which allows a person to serve beer, wicker, beer, wine, liquor, and right. cider. I think right there. Yeah, no, we we can. Adam can assist you with this. <laughs> Adam can help you. Okay, okay so I'm happy. So can I ask you before they go get the license? Where are you going to put it in? What section? In the back? So, oh no, we put it in the concession stand, stand yeah, and have a table stand. for candy. Okay. Yeah. No, this has to be contained. We have, mm -hmm. and Steve Wolf, you met him the yes. last time you yep. were there. You know him. Yep. yep. He's perfect. He's a Yorktowner. He's old. <laughs> he's old. <laughs> and he <laughs> has been a bartender. But what does it take to be a bartender? Here's a <laughs> glass of wine and here's a here's a bottle of beer. So it's a high end. <laughs> hey, Barry. Beer, wine, beer, wine, and soda. And, and beer, and, wine, and soda. Yeah. And Barry, you, soda, water. you do know I have a, a, a little bit of a history with the hospitality and bar industry. Oh, oh yeah. yes, yes. Uh, no, 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 no. If, if you, if just getting things in line and, and well, I'm and ready. And I think it starts the board. I think, I think the board in the future needs yeah. to pass a resolution authorizing yes. you to go do it. And we're going to have to talk to them because it says upon a premises spe uh, specializing capacity for at least 600 persons. Right. Well. The theater itself has a capacity of 576. That's what the occupancy is. Right. But that doesn't outside. include the lobby. Yeah, right. Outside. Yeah, right. has got to be right, another right, 50 right. or so. Yeah. So I think we're covered. Well, we'll, we'll work. That. Well, you know, that's part of the SLA process. Okay. You know, and, and right. we'll walk you through it. And, and I think I that Adam and Ed can yes. definitely assist you. Have you considered doing black and white movies there? 
We talked about that talked the about other that day. Talked about that as well. It's one of the uh, 17. Totally. <laughs> I got to pick still to Paramount. We it's would be, we would love to. The way we left that off, that we, is a, we yeah. were going to talk to Jeff Schneider, who you Correct. were talking to. I haven't reached out to him yet about seeing what the cost. So previously there was a budget. It was budgeted for a projector. This it has is been not on budgeted. your agenda on, from the no, last regime. it's never regime. been. Never and it was you never remember, purchased. it was always in the budget. Yeah. It was, not in the budget anymore. It was not in this year's budget. It was never purchased. So Can we buy a screen? No, it's not a screen that we need. It's the projector. It's the projector. He the, has something that we I have a, a site, that blue thing on the back of the stage, which projects beautifully. But, I mean, it's great. But we could get a screen. That's the cheap How part. How much is a projector? Oh, God. It's, over $20,000. It's over $20,000. Okay. So, so, but what, what, we did, what we discussed, though, was seeing how much it would be to rent, rent one, one, do if a few yeah. events oh, okay. to see, see, what if they, see what kind of tendency is. And if we feel that it warrants uh, a pur purchasing the equipment because it's you know considerable, then, then again, we can move forward. we have to consider, Barry does old school advertising. No, I don't, I do now. Good you do old news. school advertising. I don't think so anymore. Yeah, you do. We don't you pay do. for advertising okay, anymore. Okay, 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 okay. Well, I'll talk to you about that. <laughs> okay, You'll let me know. Well, there is a new way to do yeah. advertising. Love it. We have somebody. You have an ad advertising. But I'm saying that you have a whole government channel. Yes, I know. He told me the other day. You know, uh, I, I think. You know, the building use, if somebody had a party, something, and you know, there was a special requirement from Ellis to have sell uh, alcohol, right? Well, that, that that's right. The clerk can do separately. That's different. Oh, that's, that's a one-time shot. He wants a policy. He wants, he wants yeah, he wants, policy. yeah. That's There's no thinking. reason why we can't get a like, We're not uh, within the distance yeah, no, to a church. It's not technically a school anymore. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, we're, we're fine. Thank uh, you, Councilman Dana, yeah. you had a question? You know, uh, many people don't realize what a jewel that the Yorktown yeah. stage actually is in this community. I know you do, Tom. Thank I, you. I, I, I enjoy it. I, we, my wife and I both go there often. We'd like to go more. Um, and I think the experience of just being able to get up and get a glass of wine or beer and mm -hmm. at the intermission would be fabulous, yeah, be along with the addition of movies. To your point, Matt, Matt to, to, to rent it, let's see how it goes. Movies are the best thing. Yeah. The movies... It there is fantastic. no cost except for Steve Wolf, right. who will run the Ooh, evening yeah, right. and sell the popcorn. There's nobody gets paid. I don't get paid. You know how I started. Nobody gets paid. You know right. And I think it'd be great. And I we really don't have do. to pay for the movie. I agree. With my daughter. That's great. She was in the um, Dan is that Bell right? School, and they once a year they'd have their the check on their for year you. And, and what, every year what? she'd get dressed up and go. No, I don't want to go in. What uh, What are the projectors now? Are they? We have someone. We just. I just. We just need to make contact with. Uh, we have, we have York town, a he's involved. Resident one of the dude. big guys. The reason, okay. the reason I ask yes, that Schneider. is because I have a, 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 a acquaintance. My former neighbor. <laughs> yes, your former neighbor. <laughs> an acquaintance right. that has reels of film, and I don't know what, what it is. Yeah, and right. I will be able to cool. find out. Well, yeah. I mean, reels of film are fine, but, you know, we you just, still need we just want to stick the CD and yeah. the DVD. Oh, it's and CD and DVD. Okay. We, yeah. want. We, want, we can rent it for a dollar, whatever it's supposed to be. Right, whatever he's willing to. Not even, right? And uh, if you don't charge, and we won't charge, yeah. we are going to ask for money. We have to pay Steve, mm -hmm. and then whatever. Like we, oh my God! Well, please, I'm with you, and I'm a lot older than you. What my favorite? I have a birthday next year. We'll double your age <laughs> next week. Word. Excuse me. Loved it. But yeah, no. These are the things that we can do there. Yeah, I agree. Yorktown stage is just going along a natural way. Can I just tell you something? I think Ed probably knows this. Way. We got to the end of the year. I'm here 22 years. Wow. Last year is the first year nobody knew about this. Nobody knows about it. It was the first time ever that I did not put money back into the business. Really? First time ever. And I don't intend to ever do it again. Isn't that wonderful, though? Oh, it's wonderful. If I have to put money back in the business, I'm leaving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and let <laughs> Augie do it. You know, Augie let Augie take but it. But all the new things that you're adding, it's only going to add to you. Well, that's, that's what, what we're trying I want. to do. I want to get people into Yorktown. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It's I just mean, part of the overall experience. That mm -hmm. we, that's, I just go back to that there's, word. There's a lot right. here. I mean, the food alone is getting better. I just wish we had more of it. Well, we're getting there. My, we're getting there. My lancemen are over at the <coughs> Greek restaurant. I'm Greek. I was going to say, yeah. restaurant's always yeah, bad. That, place yeah. is that restaurant's always, always yeah. So I go in there, yeah. Well, I Barry, we, 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 like we appreciate it. it. I think that, so, you know, the board will have to pass a resolution authorizing you to move forward, obviously, as a tenant. Um, but it sounds rather That's supportive right. uh, yes. here. Any last-minute questions? Is there any time change that no food allowed or... Food and alcohol allow in the theater? We don't have no alcohol. No, no, no. Whenever, we, if 
whenever heavy, you're gonna have to change your sign. You have to say, no food allowed, okay? Yeah. No food allowed. Oh, we still we have that sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No food allowed. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Barry, thank you. We thank appreciate you very, very much. Forward to Thanks, Barry. It. Are we on time, Laura? I want to. I do want to chat with you. Okay. Next, John Landy, building department. Was I, was I on time for that one? Oh, thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. We're starting. Hey. Hey, Sean. We have a couple things. How's school going? <laughs> Hang me now. Hello, John. <laughs> All right. So, uh, sit right over here. Away from no. the blue lines because he's going to yell at you. Nope, now you're in the back. There you go. There you go. Perfect. There you go. All right, so John, want, you, wanted, you asked the – hey, uh, gentlemen, excuse me, if you could either step to the side. Um, you're in the blue line. Uh, so John wanted to bring up fee schedule to come discuss to the town board. Uh, we had a very no, brief I, I, conversation. I was running out of White Plains, and I just got here. So what, what I basically – Summarize just, it. Yeah. The I'm number. just going to summarize and ask permission to look at it, get – uh, a gathering from the towns around us Thanks. right now what I believe and tell you why I'm thinking what I'm thinking nope. I'm here on two, over two years Thanks. our fee schedule in my opinion is too generalized I was just talking to John Tegeter about it like Lowe's their shell is a dollar a square foot or a two dollars a square so it's the same price for Lowe's it is for a small shopping center you know what I mean it, there's not a sliding scale here, so it's got to be looked at more. And do other municipalities have sliding scales? Yes. What they do is they take value of construction, and that's really should how it should be. More, uh, I mean, Tom, you know, you work in a lot of towns. It's and like if I applied the code properly, I got a lot of complaints when I heard people say that whatever new way you're you're applying fees is is wrong. Well, it's. The better way, because I was just going to say, for a roof, it says I got to charge a dollar a square foot. Mm -hmm. You got a twenty thousand square foot roof that's twenty square. It's going to cost you twenty thousand dollars for a roof, for a permit. But there are other fees that you had that dramatically increased once you came to this new compilation of. I'm only applying what the code says. I'm because, again, like. We're saying the minimum charge is three hundred dollars. That's insane. If you're doing a small for, bathroom, for, I got to charge you three hundred dollars. That's insane. a lot of money. That is a lot, a lot of money. money. That's why I'm here. I'm saying this is nuts. It's got to change. It's got to be. Can you bring stuff for us to look at? Well, I would like to come up with a could you, fee schedule for you to work with, Mr. Rodriguez. Could you work with Mr. Landy uh, on on a? I'd like to see also some type of Every analysis. Time. Of other towns, yeah, uh, so if you can, we can compare get... apples to apples on this. Yes. I want to bring it all right? together. This way, we can make an crazy. educated decision. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's what it's happening is I'm applying the law, the law okay. to the fee schedule, and right. which was not, we're making people get permits before, according to the code, that our department, as we know, did not do. Well, and it's not only our department; there are other towns that don't do it. Mm, everything I look at, everything we're charging. Or I think we checked some stuff. We checked some stuff, and there were other towns that didn't charge. Yeah, that's didn't charge for some of the things you charge. I'm only going by the code. What? What in particular? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. I don't remember. It was a year ago we looked at it. Um, like but, I know you asked me to look around for. Yeah. Sink. But they're so I don't charge. We for decided. Plumbing. We decided to look at yeah. that and. The only thing any other community charged was $35 for uh, the county permit. Well, I'm telling you, I have no choice according to our fee what are we, schedule. What are we charging? 300 So geez. Our minimum charge is $300 for a permit. So, mm -hmm. so obviously, so it seems, it's, 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 like I said, let's, let's do a, uh, yeah, it is way out of whack. So let's do a comparison with I'm other here. municipalities. If you can work with Mr. Rodriguez um, so we can see, you know, several examples Okay, and this I way mean, we can I even update this to the town board. I'm sorry, but prior to this you board, did. You did. Because, and that's why I came up with uh, let me just charge the minimum for a roof. Otherwise, it was like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for a roof because the condos were huge and they were going to get hammered. Yeah. So if, yeah, if, I heard. From but the he did so I think I think the right way. Man. I think the right way for us to proceed here is you work with uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Come back to a future work session with a comparison. 
a comprehensive comparison as met, you know as best as we can pull together and then we can discuss some proposals to update the code and update the fee schedule perfect yeah. because same with the the um, commercial that should be much different than residential okay. and right now it's the same same uh, and I'm absolutely I think you should bring it forward <clears throat> but let's obviously I know you're you're going to classes right now no, I'm done. <laughs> you're down you're done to oh, you're, today you're, was done. My last, your last day I'm today just coming home Great. now did you get a hundred I always get a hundred <laughs> So if you can work with Mr. Rodriguez on this, mm -hmm. and I think that the board obviously is receptive to the fact that we want to bring some comparison back so we can analyze it and make an informed decision mm -hmm. and update the code and the fee schedule as needed. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and add departments. things that needed to be added and take things away. Yeah, listen. But, I but, agree you know, with you. I'm fine with updating and professionalizing. That's what we're trying to do. Well, because bathroom, Be sometimes when they build a bathroom, it's a t we all know the size of a bathroom, 10 by 10 or 10 by 7. My minimum charge, according to our fee schedule, is three hundred dollars. But some bathroom can you can put in a hundred thousand dollar bathroom too, you know. I mean, but so you can. Could you could, you know? So it's I hear you. you, John. I hear you loud and clear. So if you can just work with Mr. Rodriguez, thank you. Bring me back some type of analysis that Perfect. we can compare other There's municipalities. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Would you like me? I'm going to go get some coffee. Well, we can we can have yeah. John. That'd be fantastic. If you, if you, would you email me the current fee schedule, coffee. please? It's online. See, that's the other thing. I have to work from two different ones. There's one for mechanical, which is based upon yeah. amount, cost of construction, and there's another one that's, I, it's insane. We got to combine them. Yep, got to combine them and make it easier and, and more friendly to the public. I'm with you. No problem. Thanks, have a good day. Thank you, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow. All right, next, uh, John Tegeter, Solar Law. And for the board, members of the board, the, dra the draft, the latest draft is in the, the one you last saw. The one we last saw is in the binder. This is just a conversation starter to reintroduce the legislation. Um, John and I have sat in quite a few uh, meetings regarding solar projects, uh, and we've received a bunch of feedback from contractors um about the about some potential amendments to the original draft um uh, but there is clearly an appetite in the town to see some sort of uh recognition in the code to allow these projects yeah otherwise they're you're not able to do them exactly unless it's on your house or on top of your commercial building and it's benefiting only you so uh, i asked that uh or essentially i'm here to talk about getting your go-ahead to reintroduce this and get it on the this your agendas to start moving through the review again um, my next step if you agree I said that. would be for <laughs> sorry oh that's okay would be for me to you know look at some of the comments that we've had this. and and your next tab has uh, this. collate them for you and then make some proposed changes if warranted so that, that would be my next step if you're willing to go ahead with it. Can you, uh, just one more time, I, I, we just men mentioned it briefly, but I want to make sure everyone's clear. The problem that we have, though, is that the code doesn't recognize solar other than on an individual's house. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even recognize it on an individual's house. But, right, correct. that would be an incidental accessory use, as would uh, a generator. Let's say generators are not called out in the code, but Can they're allowed, of course. Can we do a road trip? Course. Yeah, we, we're going like to do go? a road trip. Do solar farm. Let's go. Where do you want to, do you have one in mind? There's a couple in Orange County that I think we can get to see. Let's do it. Yeah. So. I think that'd be great. Let's As go take a look. It, I'd like to visually see what I'm it looks like. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, because we were sitting in a meeting about um, battery storage, and it's not the same, but somewhat related. Mm -hmm. And it was brought to our attention about the Tesla battery storage that's behind Staples. Mm -hmm. And you don't understand it unless you go see it. Exactly. Yeah. And exactly. It, it actually really helped me comprehend what we were trying to accomplish mm -hmm. with that legislation. And, um, we, and I agree with you. So yeah. count me in. And we, we can also uh, take a trip to Manhattanville College, which did the uh, canopy over the, parking. you know, oh, park, parking. Yeah, parking. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so that, I think that would be instructive as well. So one of the places you could just take a quick ride. You ever go to Woodbury Commons? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As you're going down the hill, before you start Correct. going back you up the hill, yeah. look towards the throughway. You see okay. them. You'll see the ugliest yeah. array you ever want to see in your life. Really? <laughs> <laughs> now, there are a lot of farms that have, that want to do it because they've yeah. got areas that in the back where you will not be able to see it. Right. And they need to make money. Yep. In order to keep the farm working. Right. 
We have one here. We have one here. I know we do. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was in New Jersey, you know, end of uh, Holland Tunnel or the new building. Every building just in front of the, you know, the, the, the station to go to the ferry and all that, only parking for uh, recharging. Yeah. Yes. All of them. Electric yeah. cars. EV, yeah, electric EV car, car chargers. And then you can park yeah. your car on, 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 on a Sunday other than yeah. that. It has to be that kind of car. Right. Are we going to get electric private car building, charges? all of them, really. We well, we do. Yeah, well, yes. we have so We have Tesla. We have Tesla yes. over by BJ's. O over People by really? BJ's. Yeah. And they put in, I think, 10 chargers. Correct. And then uh, several years ago, th there was one put in in front of Staples for generic cars. So that's been there for a few oh, years. Yeah. 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 I, Little Tom takes his camera I, out. I know. Yeah. John, so. we used to have IBM electric uh, car charger, okay? For yeah. Six, six, oh, six, I'm six sure they like Oh, I'm sure IBM has ago, them, yeah. More than 25 yeah. years ago, okay? IBM's getting in the game. Yeah. That's for sure. 25 years ago, yeah. But they're not something new. Uh, yes, Th they this, are. this may all be moot in a few years as a company that's trying to design all windows to have solar technology in the really? window itself. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And they have, uh, they're experimenting and as soon as we have something, roof something. shingles that have. Yes. Yeah. yeah, roof shingles, yeah. We've seen those. Well, Tesla, I, think, I believe, I is making those, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, but they had a little. Uh, they might be, yeah, They had a pushback on it, on, on the project not working yeah. as well as possible. You can this is great. I, I think that we should continue the conversation. <laughs> okay. Um, and by all means. When do you want to go on a road trip? Uh, maybe next week or the following. Okay. I'll see if I can set a couple things up. Okay. Maybe we do it in one day. Yeah, a little bit of traveling, but. That's okay. I think it's all right. No problem. Road trip. Right, Jenna? Road trip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, so, thank you. All right, so any, I'll try to get this back. Anything else you need from us? No, I'm, okay. I'm going to move forward with it and uh, let you know when I have something ready to go back on the agenda. Fantastic. Thanks, and, and as for battery storage, we, we did refer that out, and we have gotten some feedback, I believe, yeah. correct? And okay. the uh, planning board has, uh, we're formulating their responses Perfect. from last night's from discussion. From last night's discussion. Yeah. Great. So, awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks, John. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rundle, and look at this, we're back, back under schedule. How do you like that, Mora? <laughs> you know, hey, you're Kim really, you're really cursing yourself. You know oh, that's that. okay. Yeah. Kenny's not going to, he's not going to do me. Hey, Kim, Kenny, how are you? Good. Oh, oh Ken. It's great to see you. Good Thanks for being you. here. Kenny. Kenny, why didn't Rundle? you do this Another one. before that's you needed? That's great, Tom. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that, he did that. personnel to do this. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So I was going to the bus this week. Jesus. <laughs> because this will make you money. Holy cow. Right. So that's what we want to talk I about. Didn't do so, that. Ken, we're, one of the things that um, was brought up at the end of last year uh, was the commercial water meters. Mm -hmm. Too long. Could you, <laughs> could you give us a, an, a, just brief us quickly on right. what the issue is regarding the com commercial water meters? Just pass these yep. Down. And then one issue, maybe a dozen different, okay? <laughs> yep, here, I got you one right here. You got it? Okay. Go ahead and come over Adam. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so good evening. Um, as the supervisor said, I'm here to talk to the board about commercial water meters. Um, there's a law in the town code on the books now that the commercial water meters have to be tested every three years. Um, it's my experience, and the results get sent to the water department. And if the tests don't pass, the water meters are inaccurate. They have to be repaired or replaced. Um, it's my experience that this has not been done for the water district. We've talked, I've come in front of the board quite a few times, um, talked about that we really need to do this. Uh, we, we have a program now um, that will accept all the test reports oh, over good. at our okay. office. Now it's just a matter of putting it in. But the one thing I'd like to talk to the board about um, is the language in the town code for, for testing. And more specific is the noncompliance, mm -hmm. okay? Um, w what I would not like to see is we put a lot of work into this, and there's a lot of behind the scenes and a lot of time and energy that goes into this mm -hmm. testing, mm -hmm. um, and the property owners not respond. So what I'd like to see... What I'd like to see is if we could change the language in the town code um, with some type of penalty because what happens is the rate payers in the district, if the commercial meter is running, let's say at 80%, we're losing 20% revenue right. for the most part, right? So the rate payers throughout the district have to eat that 20%, right? right? So I like to see everybody pay their fair share. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's, it, it's something that really needs to be done. 
I think it will also lessen our um, water loss for the year. So every year we monitor what our, what's sold, what we purchased, what we sold, and the percentages do, that's missing is from fire, you know, firefighting, uh, water main breaks and everything. And for 2019, we were actually, we did very, very good. Awesome. Um, but, uh, you know, we work to get that number down every year. Yeah, of course. Uh, and, and I strongly believe that this uh, testing of, of the water meters, of the commercial water meters, um, will bring that number down, and it will also have everybody paying their fair share. I think share. one of the reasons they don't do it is because there's no penalty. You give yes, them a penalty, absolutely. Absolutely. they'll do it. Kenny, how many meters are we talking? We're talking probably about 350 15. to 400. Yeah, 15 years. Right. Now, you know, it, it has here for every three years tested. Quite often the times, the the people that we have come in, even if it's residents that have a bad meter, let's say, they're never tested. All of a sudden we catch that they're using an exorbitant amount of water, right. and then we charge them for it. I don't know that three years is is is... You want to shorten that? I time want to frame? shorten that time frame. I sure. think three years is too long. Okay. Um, because let's say over the course of a year, they, I don't know, can't find 80,000 gallons. I, I'm just using <laughs> a number. Um, they're not going to be paying that much in return if their meter is indeed bad, that it sh shorted the right. town 80,000 gallons worth of water. No, it shorted the residents of York Town. Well, or the residents of York Town. Yeah. I just want to ask. Uh, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, I know that you were working with Kenny on this. Any thoughts on changing? Two questions. We talked about uh, first off, what do you thought? Your thoughts on changing time, the time limit from three years? I think that's something we need to look at. Mike, Mike. I think that's something we need to look at. Um, Mr. Rundle and I haven't discussed that feature, um, so I yeah. need to get his then, thoughts. He's an operational did we, expert. We, we did do a, a slight check on other municipalities and my understanding is that there is a you know I don't want to call it a standard but other municipalities or a number of municipalities have a penalty associated with noncompliance. Abs absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, and I just want and, to make sure. Yes, they do. So Kenny, is remember, that any we put the three years in it's not anything in statutory law that says you do yeah, it three years. No, we can change it. it. Yeah, we right. can change this. So what you Councilman can, Diana, what's your th you want to go to? Uh, either eighteen months or two. What's easy is, is 18 months or is two? I think two years. Two years. And do you have the easier. people to handle if we, let's say we did every well, two years. Right. So that's the next. We're, we're not sure of what it's going to look like because it has never been done. So right. this is, this is going to be all new. Um, and you also have to properly communicate to the property the, owners if you're going from three to two. Right. And you have to figure out how many of those. You have to change the code you're and gonna, then we. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. you got to, you got to do some homework on this to figure uh, out how many. Uh, yeah. Right. And if you're, if your staff can handle you know, the increase in, in meters that you have to get reported. Exactly, exactly. There's going to be some additional work added to the department by going to the two years. Mm -hmm. You know, the first so, year when you have your input from, um, it's always that first year that you begin to put that input in, that's your that's your worst year. Yeah, be the first After year. After that, be right. it, it becomes a piece of cake. Right, right. So, so may, may I say, how many commercial user, large user, because they are, they are using much larger than homeowners, that's for sure. Uh, so, you know, uh, if they, 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 what we should do is calibrate, just as we did it before. So you have a standard that, listen, you know, is it 100,000 gallon? This is the old versus new one. That, that should be done at least for the largest user. Otherwise, you know, they're going to have a war, you know? And how much it costs, just roughly, you know? So... $100,000 uh, $100, gallon for... So the town, we just had a couple meters tested that we purchased water from the town of Newcastle. Uh, there's a, I think it's a four inch and a six inch. I think they're around twelve or $1,400 a mm -hmm. test. Yeah. Um, That's part of the, the cost of doing business, though. Is that right. really large? But the, the, the one thing that, that I would like to add, so I was talking to the meter professionals, uh, the people that purchase, you know, that make the meters, uh, so let's just say if there was a meter, if, if the test is $1,200, let's just say, for argument's sake, and the meter was from installed in the 80s, okay, there is a very good chance that those meters are not running sure. efficiently. Right. Sure. Right. Right. And the problem is, is being that those meters are so old, there's no parts available to repair them. So if I was a commercial property owner, 
and I knew my meter was from 1980, I wouldn't pay somebody $1,200 to test it. I, I would put it. that $1,200 towards the purchase of a new meter. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. So that, that's so one an message. An educational factor, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. That I'd like now, to now get Ken, out to Ken, I you. don't know, you know, we were just having a little sidebar discussion about the fact that, uh, like our fire inspections, you have some places that are bigger fire hazards that have, or annual potential inspection. that have annual. So, you know, looking at it, restaurants in particular, you know, I know my water usage was crazy because, right. you know, the dishwasher, right. the sinks, the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I don't know if... Uh, if you if even something like that works where you have a one year and a three or two instead of moving everyone but so ju just to clarify for the commercial water meters what what the definition of that is is any water meter that's in one inch and a half and larger right so this does not apply to the three quarter inch or the one inch which you would typically find in a residence okay the inch and a half meters so it's just by size sorry so it's by size yes. size will qualify as yes well. Yes. So we're talking any, shopping so. centers. Um, we're talking commercial buildings. Commercial buildings, condo associations. Yeah, and, and schools. I, you know, the idea that you have a meters from 1980s. I just said, Matt, they're older than you are. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 they're they're all let me, let me at mix. that point, right, Kenny? Well, exactly. And that's my point. And yeah. 1980, Alice. It's <clears throat> that's probably one of the newer meters. If if I had really, to. is yeah. that right? Yeah, we've had some meters where you can't even see the numbers on the dials, and w the readers are out there and trying to figure out what this number is. And well, we know we had a history of paying for <laughs> certain shopping centers' water, mm -hmm. the residents paying yeah. for it. Right, and, and I, I, I strongly urge the the board to. So, if I can ask you and, and yes. Mr. Rodriguez, if we can come back with, I'd like to see a, a more formal proposal. Okay, from you. Um, whether or not it's you know just the the, the penalty, or if we're going to try to do a sliding scale, or if we're going to you know go from three to two, or if you want to you know do three years for, and then and then two years to, you know we can we can put a qualifier in there in 2022. You can go to two, every two years if you to give yourself time to uh, be ready for it. Okay, you can do you that know, as we well. Can send out a letter prior to the public hearing um, to all of those people. I'm explaining that um, we are going to update the code, and and they're welcome to the public hearing. Absolutely, or whatever. yeah, you have to. Yeah. So you know, so that we can be sure to hit them to make sure that they, that at least they got some information that we were going to change. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Is there any other yeah. thing? You know, I you know, there's one building, and then they expand the building, right? Uh, you know, they, they are using a large amount of water. Some people, the plumber, hook it up directly, passing the meter. You know, they, they, they again, not, are exact, you know, they are already example like that. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I agree. So, you know, you you are, you know, using large quantity of water, uh, and, uh, you know, we are not getting money. But well, I no, hear, well, okay? You just want, that's what I was about to say. We're not charging them more to do business. We're just making sure they're in compliance. No, and absolutely, I think that's yeah. You know, but and absolutely. to Kenny's point, yeah, is yeah, we're yeah. just making they sure they pay their they fair share. Whatever, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and actually, you know, you know may I say rate. something else? Uh, they have a control of how much they are using every weekday electronically. If something goes wrong, the town can, uh, you know, shut the water off or something, emergency. You save water and money both together. And it's just like a homeowner. They have electronic monitoring. You know, you, you know how good it is, you know. But it was, you know, forever the reason $4 million was used for balance the budget instead of putting those meters, right. you know. So, so uh, it Vishen was a, brings a, you, you bring up a good point about yeah. with the, um, the radio reads. Right? Yeah. So let's just say for argument's sake, if half of these meters are replaced, they would be replaced with the new technology for, right. you know, for the radio read. So there's not That's somebody fine. physically going out there. Right. Uh, they have it right now uh, with with this new program where the residents can go download an app on their right. smartphone. You're see it on they your can phone. look at their yeah. usage. Um, that would answer a lot of questions for some folks. Oh, absolutely, it would. Because I know I'm, we've been getting phone calls in the office, right. and I know that you've been great in helping me sort through some of this stuff. And it's just having them see where the usage is. And we've been able to solve quite a few problems that right. way. Right. Absolutely. So when Can you do your public hearing, remember what we talked about in terms mm -hmm. of all of those things that you, so that people could, can actually see that, yeah, this is a way to do it. If you have a, a smart app on your phone, right. you can look at your usage. But that, that's the newer technology, and it's coming for out. For some with, people. What, but what I, well, for, the, for these particular meters, it's fairly new. But what I would like to do um, at a different time, I'd like to bring the, 
to the, into the work session to meet your company, and they can expand on everything. There's love to hear it. so much you can I'd do. I'd love to hear it. I, I think it's yeah. investing in new technology. Everyone knows that I'm, I'm for it, so let's hear it and see what we can do. You did a presentation the student about idea, a year yeah. ago, which was excellent. Thank you. If you do that and you bring the meter people in with you to do a presentation on how this can work, and if we have to, like you say, you have a meter that's 1980, you can almost guarantee that it's going to be out of calibration. It's going to cost $1,200 to yeah. repair to calibrate it and repair it, or $1,200 or thirteen or whatever it might be to replace it. Well, no harm, no foul. You might as well put the new one in. My question, one other question I had, Kenny, is uh, backflow preventers. How often are they tested? They're tested once every year. Yeah. Once every year. That's very important. And most of those are in commercial locations anyway, yes. correct? Most, for the most part, yes. Yeah. So yeah, but, that mm -hmm. might be a way to uh, get, your, um, yeah. get your, your testing of the meters on schedule to where your larger locations with the backflow preventers um, are, are one in the same. Right, and, and you're 100% right. And the program yeah. that I was just speaking about yeah. that we have for the, for the commercial meter testing, that ties right into our backflow Perfect. program. Perfect. Good. That's right in with Good. our backflow. Perfect. Great. Okay, so that may work out for our larger locations Absolutely. every year so that they don't, let's, just, say, let's say IBM for argument's sake. You know, they probably have a 10-inch a main going up there for all I know. They, but they, they have a continuous you know, monitoring. It, it, yeah. it must have worked on it one time. I did. <laughs> so, Kenny, can you, can you and uh, Mr. Rodriguez, can you guys be back here in the next work session with a formal legislative proposal for us to consider? Or you need an, you need another two weeks beyond that? I and think, also, you know, I, I'd just like to make sure that I, I have enough time to gather everything. Okay. I just don't want to. I'm with you. I want you to, to rush to into be it. back do next it, week. No, no, no. Do it carefully. I, wanna, Let's make, right. I just want to see this thing. Do I mean, it right. it's, it's an issue that we need to obviously address. Absolutely. And so I just don't want to lose it and have it fall off the plate no. because, you know, um, you know, 10 hundred of. The no, I, I you get know, you. we just want the public to know the, the residents to know this does not. This is nothing. This is the rate here is nothing has nothing to do with them right in fact in the end it probably is going to help it's going to you help them it's going to help right. because homeowners. it's going to alleviate some of the costs that we're spending paying for the shopping center's so, water I, I talked to one of our well not so neighboring about 20 minutes north the municipality um they did a meter program their revenue went up by 45 percent yeah wow. whoa because of the you know the risk yeah. so the return on investment <laughs> is better <laughs> than our original return on investment was with what we had been working on in the past. Yeah. They, it, it, it's, their revenue it's is 45% sure higher. Right, you know, uh, right. Let me just say something yeah. else to the board and, and the people. Three billion gallons of water was saved by the, all the municipality. You know, there is one organization. I have the, the, you know, the whole article, and I, was in contact, I contacted them. We can say like this. So homeowner benefits as well as the commercial but the most important right, thing, if you use less water, you have to less purify it. And, you know, you, you know if the more uh, increase in the housing uh, number of homes, something, you still provide the same quantity of water from the same tank right. and our processing. All these things have to be combined together just to tell them that use less and save more. Right. Well, Everybody, it's a yeah. you know, precious resource. And there was yeah. a program I thought I, e I think I emailed over to you that you were going to take a look at. Yes, it was a uh, public advocacy program yes. just to help with water consumption and education. Right, yeah, and that's exactly what, what Councilman Patel is talking exactly about. Exactly right. Exactly. So right. that's something that we can circle back with. S absolutely. Absolutely. See if there's, you know, that's something that we Look want to. Look at that. That is a absolutely. I like Perfect. Vishnu's slogan too: "Use less, save more." Use less, save mm -hmm. more. There you go. You know, there is a there is <laughs> there is a national uh, <laughs> you know conference at University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I cannot go, unfortunately, I have two days, Four you know, words. but uh, it's only $25. You don't even have to pay $25 if you're a municipal guy, but it, it's involved two days to go and hotels and all that, and I, it doesn't fit otherwise. Very nice program. All the experts from countries, uh, you know, they're going to be there, you know, but you can go to the online and find out what they are doing it because this uh, technology is not new, you know, it's available. Right. But uh, thank you. Kenny, thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you. you know? We're still under time here, right, more. Yep. Thank you for I your knew time. Kenny thanks, was going to do it to me. Kenny, thanks, buddy. Bye, really Kenny. appreciate all your work. Ken, you missed the big and, and by the way, thank you. Last week, I, know, you know? I, was I give you. Water, I, I know. Yeah. I, I and know. Kenny, please oh, thank you your staff hard. for their help with the water main breaks. I, we, we've been, I think, rather fortunate this season. Is my sense? Knock on wood, <laughs> right? We don't say that word. Yeah, no, but we appreciate all the reference. Thank you. Got a vacation? That's good. All right. Next. Thanks, Ken. We got. We're bringing in our closer for the rest of the night. All right. Jim Moderano.
three inning save here. There you go. Please sit. Hey, gentlemen. We have a number of issues, a number of uh, not issues, but topics. Tim, with me, Tim uh, from thank you for yeah. being here. Oh, Tim. Very excited to have Tim here. We've been looking Tim, forward to this from? for a while. Get me, get capture to, point. I, from capture get, point. I was, community I was, pass. I was, I was going to say I was going to say Nyack, New York, and okay. but that, <laughs> that's not the right answer, is it? Did you figure out the, uh, yes, the presentation? Are we, uh, no, we're just going to. No, we're just going to go with this. Okay. So is there if there's, yeah, and and what we could do also for I'll your presentation, if we if you have a PowerPoint presentation, maybe more if there's a way for us to put it on the website. If he has an electronic presentation as well? I, I don't believe so. We could, uh, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I'd be happy to sort of show the website, really, the, the experience. Sure. If, if you Whatever wanted works. to see it I've, in, these, in these meetings in the past, um, typically a, a discussion based on, you know, the, the history that we have in the area and the success we've had in Westchester County. Yep. Usually the discussion no is enough, but I'll do whatever you guys need. No problem. Why don't you, why don't you and Jim tell us what yep. we're talking about, something that so, I know. So if you open up these pa packets, you'll see uh, the – Incredible amount of business they do within Westchester County. Well, you know, and, and that's this that's country affects residents. You have nothing that you can put up on our our monitors. That's why. I would, oh, yeah. sure, uh, sure. We can plug in. I can put something up. Can we? Is that can you help? more? Is that possible? We got an HDMI cord. As long as you can turn it on, and uh, you have I, so I brought, Wi-Fi. You, wi you, you have a laptop. Okay. You have Wi-Fi laptop. Yeah. 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 I don't think I can. I don't think I can Wi-Fi my. Screen onto there. I still have yeah, to use yeah, the HDMI. No, really? no, you can. Yeah, well, you got it all. <laughs> we have the technology. Sure. Yeah, just sit with more. Uh, sit wherever you want. Absolutely. Actually, look, why don't we do this? While you, you want, it, while he sets up, do you want us to move on to another thing, or do you want to? You need to help set him up. Uh, I need to help okay. set him so then, why don't we? Why don't we take? So why? Don't why don't we do this? Why don't we, I'll, I'll get this. I'll do this. You want to? You want to take a short break, and this way everyone can use. Sure, why not? You that want to take a short awesome. break this way. All right, so we're, we're just going to take a short two-minute break so everyone can stretch their legs and we can get Tim set up for his presentation. Thank you. All right, yeah, just a little congestion. But... So you're going to use them to do the passes? Okay. That's yeah, correct. good. That's so smart. Awesome. Online registration, like the whole nine. Excellent. Four. Four. Nice. Nice but I won't you. see those people oh, yeah. at Sparkle Lake in front of me anymore. Yeah, you'll still see them. They'll sell passes. Yeah. 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 Well, they'll still sell well, they had their lawn chairs yeah. and everything, like, like 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh. Somewhere. <laughs> so they'll still, you'll still have your pass. I told we were doing this Dr. Hatter.
And we are back for the work session meeting, February 11th. Uh, we have with us uh, Jim Moderano, our park superintendent. And uh, we have some very exciting presentation uh, to share with the folks of Yorktown. Jim, why don't you uh, take it away for us? So it's, it's been about three years, maybe plus, in the making of bringing community, four years, excuse me. That's the uh, official streak. We're breaking it, hopefully. <laughs> Um, bringing community pass into our community and allowing our residents to sign up for recreation online. Uh, not only will they have online, but it also help my staff with a uh, really easy to use POS system uh, in my office. So uh, we win on the front end and the back end uh, with working with community pass and, and signing this deal. Um, if you talk to anyone in Westchester Parks and Recreation, uh, community pass is the appropriate uh, vendor to use here. And there you gave us a, and I do want to introduce Tim Bracken from, it's not Community Pass, but it's Capture Point. Capture but Point is a company, Community right? Pass, right? And Tim provided us a whole list of municipalities, both here in uh, in Westchester, our, uh, Rockland, um, can, there's some in Connecticut, and I think there was one in Putnam, right? Was that Town of Carmel? No? Might be Town Carmel. of Carmel yep. is yep. Putnam as well. Uh, so a good list of references for us that already use the services. Um, I think in total it says nationally Capture Point serves nearly 400 clients, meaning <coughs> municipalities, 436 states. And schools, yes. And, oh, and schools. Thank you. Wow. So we're very, very excited to, you know, be here. We've, we met in uh, December originally, right? And uh, we said we put that mile marker that we wanted to be at this point. So it's just very gratifying to finally be here. So please, by all means, if you wouldn't mind giving us a... A presentation we'd appreciate absolutely it. so so may, just, I, may i ask you like, of course tell the people we already have and what is new okay yeah i mean yeah okay. currently currently we have a, a system uh in place where uh, everything we do is manual uh vision news so you have to literally come into our office from uh, 8 30 to 4 30 um and, and bring a check uh, or or your credit card to pay with a fill out a piece of paper um, and, and for some residents, you know, that can be difficult to make it there on time and fill out all the yeah. paperwork. Yeah. Uh, whereas now, you can, for the first time, you'll be able to, from the privacy of your own home, sign up for our recreation programming, whether it's the pool, uh, whether it's um, whether it's camp, whether it's just your basic recreation programming. You'll be able to pay for that online. So we have a tax payment and many other water payment. This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Tim? Very good. So just from just to talk through is kind of the overview for the community. We've been doing this now for 17 years. It's a cloud-based application, so all you need is a computer with a browser and an internet connection. So if you're on the public side and you're operating from your phone, right here I have the town of Cortland up right here. We can't really see that, but I can scroll right through here if I'm a parent in Cortland. If I'm sitting in the doctor's office and waiting for the doctor, which we always are, Right? You can go ahead and sign up while you're waiting online. You can fill out your forms. You can sign your waivers and acknowledgments, which the town <coughs> is, is obligated to, to collect. Mm -hmm. And you can also make your payment via e-check or via credit card. You can save your payment method if you want. So it becomes a very convenient way to interact with the community or with the recreation department. You can sign up, as Jim said, with all your programs. You can do facility reservations if you want to rent a pavilion or a park, if that's something that you want to roll out. You can establish your pool membership, that type of a thing. So this is something that's, that's really widespread across the county and across the country, and uh, we're, we're excited to make it part of uh, Yorktown as well. So thank you. Security issue? No. None? No. Really? Now, do they have to go on the town's website to capture you? So there's a website that they can go to. Essentially, there can be a very easy link. What our customers do um, is create a link on the website so that it would say register here. And I'll show you, I'll show you here. So this was linked directly to, this is basically one link away from a municipal website. So there's a link that someone in the town who manages the town website would right. put probably in the recreation page, right, right? and link over to it. Right. And Here's where the family would log in. Now, I've, I've gone one step ahead just in the interest of time. I created a family account, and I am, I, I am David Bowie, the fictional David Bowie, which <laughs> a lot of you should know, um, but many of you may not. Anyhow, so I've logged in. So all my family information, I've created this account where I have myself, and I have two of my children in here. I can have anybody in the household listed in here. 
uh, legally. So that if I want to sign anybody up, I can. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of self-service tools. These are going to be super convenient for, your, for the community so they don't have to wait on lines. They don't have to call and wait for people to respond. They're not sending emails or waiting, right? Not making those phone calls. They can view and pay balances. They can update their account information. My wife and I, we have three children. If, you know, you register the kids, now they're older now, but back in the day, you'd ask, you know, did, did, you, did you sign them up for camp, honey? I don't know. I forget. Did you sign them up for camp? I don't know. I forget. You go into view registrations. You can see exactly what you've done there. And what um, I really love, I'm sorry to cut you off there, Tim. What I really love about this, too, is as you're looking through a lot of the different things you can sign up for uh, and you have your roster, your family is your roster, um, if it's a class for an 8 to 10-year-old, only the child that is 8 to 10 well, you'll be able to sign up for. So you're not. There's, it's going to awesome. avoid a lot of confusion on what you're signing them up sure, for. Sure. Uh, you'll be able to sign up your kid for the appropriate program. Right. So. Prevents those accidental registrations that end up in withdrawals and refunds and confusion and Which roster errors and things like up. that. So, so lots of self-service. There's a message center. So anything that the community or the recreation department sends out, you're going to find in your message center. Any program that you register for, you're going to find all of your receipts there. Okay. When it comes time for taxes, which are coming up pretty quickly, you know, you can pull your, you pull your tax information from there and give it to your accountant to make sure that you're writing off anything you can with flexible spending. And, and there is some time spent uh, with our staff when it comes to um, camp, everyone wants their camp receipts uh, that they don't always get. So you'll often see around tax time people coming in for camp their receipts. camp receipts. Um, right. So uh, this would actually help us in the office a little bit with, with time because the parents could just do it You're straight right, from right the there. from the website. Now, would they be able to send you their medical information about the kids as well? Th that may be a separate um, app we might may, may look into purchasing. Uh, at this point, uh, we they would still have to come in and give us that documentation. Um, okay. I don't believe you have uh, immunity uh, ability to download. I would. There are wrinkles that you might need additional depending on the. Uh, Department of Health and the requirements that they have, but you're going to see. I'm going to go through a registration here. You're going to see how okay. all the information that needs to be collected about a family, whether it's emergency contacts or um, authorized pickups or allergies or right best friends or favorite foods or nicknames. You can collect all that in Community Pass so that you don't have to collect all these paper forms, and then you can access it in the database. So it's always That's right there perfect. for you. It's it really is terrific. And, so. Uh, the, yes, sir. the information provided to the Parks and Recreation is property of or whom? That is a fantastic question because I mean, sometimes it, it, in this uh, industry you, know, you do not, own, you do like not this, own your data. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So some companies will monetize yeah. that data. They'll yeah, take the that problem, information you know? and sell the lists and try to monetize it that way. Contractually, and your your attorney has reviewed this. You are the owner of the data. We don't use any of your information. It's completely secure, and it is entirely yours. So it's something that we kind of hang our hat on. You know, it's kids, it's families. You don't want to be given that, that information. Mouse is a dangerous thing to have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so there's a translate button here to be sensitive to folks that maybe are not comfortable with English as, as, their, as their native language, so they can go ahead and translate the whole website and do their business that way. I'm going to jump into a registration here. This whole page here is customizable so that the recreation department can be as fancy as they want. It's really the content that's going to be uh, going to be adjustable as opposed to the template, which is fairly fixed. Here I have uh, the process where there's a different workflow to do a registration for, say, a park pavilion than there is for a recreation activity. But most of what you'll be doing is going to be recreation activities. So I'm going to click in here for the purposes of keeping your data nice and clean so you're not working with bad data, right? Garbage in, garbage out. This is basically a verification page that you can choose either to use or not use. It's there for you, but you can sort of eliminate it from the registration process. So I'm a family now. I'm the David Bowie family, and if I want to go and register for somebody, I can come in and here I can do a keyword search. I can search, if I scroll down a little bit, by... I can search by age, I can search by grade, gender, when the program begins, locations if you have multiple locations. I can search by program groups, depending on how you want to set up what we consider here as your catalog, your online catalog, kind of like an Amazon shopping experience. And we also have something called a family filter, which is really cool. So if I say, you know what, uh, you know, I'm the parent, I'm David, but I want my kids to do something together. So let me do a family filter. Show me what's available to Bergen and Zoe Bowie here. Oh, wow. So I can scroll through here and see that all of these programs, both of my children are eligible for. So if I want to sign them both up for, say, Tai Chi, 
I can say, okay, they're both eligible for it. Fantastic. Here it's going to roll out different sessions. So you might have an AM session, you have a PM session, you might have intermediate, you might have advanced. You have full capability to roll out all the different programs. You're going to see eligibility here. Eligibility can be by time, it can be by date, can be by gender, can be by school, can be by residency, can be by age, whatever it may be. So you have lots of tools there. Dates and times, scheduled information, price and location. Here you can see there's a different price for a non-resident than there is for a resident. The system will do that right out of the gate so that your non-residents are actually paying more. Um, and you can go ahead and share on, on Facebook and social media if you prefer to send it via email if you want to share some information with somebody. But for the purposes of continuing through the demo, you're going to find that it's a very linear process, so people don't get lost in, in, in this process. They complete it very quickly. On average, our, our tables show when there's not some guy like me talking too much while you're doing the demo, uh, it takes about two and a half minutes to complete a uh, to complete a registration, which is super fast. Two and a half minutes instead of going, finding the time to go, standing in line, mm -hmm. either standing in line in the rain, as I know, I see Kevin Byrne over there. Kevin Burns, he, he tells stories about how he had to stand in the rain with his kids to get you know registered for stuff. So just just makes it that much easier, more efficient, both for the for the user, which is our residents, but also for our staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very efficient. It's going to cut your labor costs significantly. That's good, Jim. Well, one of the things that Jimmy told me <laughs> you can't do today that you will be able to do with this <coughs> is that if I'm at work and I'm having a really bad day, if I decide to scroll down the pages and see that there is a yoga class or a meditation class, I actually can go and register for that class. Yeah, right there. It used to be I'd have to run home, run to your department, hope yeah. it doesn't close before I get there. We're seeing a, a, a huge decline. I mean, this is, you know, wide for people that don't have this online. Um, in Mount Pleasant, when I was there, we didn't have online either. And we just, in both towns, we've seen a huge decline in adult registration. Mm -hmm. Because adults are now are busier than ever, whether you have one or two jobs. Totally. You're working overtime. Um, there's no way you can make it in in our hours, 8.30 to 4.30, mm -hmm. to sign up for oh, a yeah. class that mm -hmm. may be going on at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock. You it. know, we, we have programs that go on outside of our office hours. So... To give adults the opportunity to sign up for programs is a huge opportunity for them. It's something sure. that they haven't been able to do in years. So um, I'm happy to actually, not only the kids win and the seniors win, uh, but also your, your general adult, uh, your general taxpayer will actually benefit from this as well. Tim, I don't know. Do you, do you, would you have, uh, I hate to put you on the spot, but do you have any, any data that's, that shows us how much growth your clients have seen in their rec programs once? It, it, it varies from, from department to department, from community to community. Mm -hmm. if, if, I could, if I could answer sort of, of course. qualitatively. Yeah, please. The communities in Westchester, communities in Bergen County, New Jersey, which is where we're based, communities in you know, Fairfield County, Connecticut. You see where I'm going yeah. with this. There are, different, right. there are certain types of communities. Uh, they, they lock into this much more quickly. Sure. People want to be doing things. Yeah. You're generally going to see an increase in program participation and an increase in revenue. So it just depends on how much. At some point, you'll actually get to the point where you're probably doing 80 to 90 percent online registration. That's what I told you, yeah. So, I, you know, I people was reading are not, the testimonials right. out of Jersey, and they were saying that they had a migration of up to 90, 95 percent in, in one instance. Uh, to the online platform, yeah, and, which and is I fantastic. Think, I think it varies uh, in, in when you're talking about growth uh, depending on the program, right? So always. pools and camps will always be kind of at max capacity, right? Of course. But sure. you're making the taxpayer's life a lot easier. Yeah. Whereas when it's uh, just individual programs like kids' programs, uh, adult programs, or even some senior programs that they have to come up and sign for, those <coughs> numbers will just skyrocket right. immediately. Right. I mean, what, what we're talking about, we're making it more convenient for, for families, Right. To do things like the camps and the and the uh, and the pools, but we're also what we're really talking about, quite frankly, is revitalizing our rec programs right. by giving people an easier option and engaging them in a way that they're able to, like you said, Alice, you having a tough day? I had, you know. I'm gonna take a class. <laughs> there you go. Some butt. <laughs> That's it. And <laughs> and it's two clicks away. You're two and a half minutes from registering, and off you go. I, you know, and it helps. It, it's it's a win for you know. I think it's a win for everybody. And the good part about it is that people can suggest what they, the classes they'd like to see. They, Absolutely. You know, they don't have to just rely. If you want, they can write into you guys and say, 
Why don't you do this kind of class? They don't have to just write into them. They can also email ideas for Yorktown at yorktownny.org. Yeah. I had to put the plug in. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question you know, for, Mr. for Mr. Mr. Bowie. Scheduling their games. David you know. Bowie. Well, I have a question for David Bowie. Bishop, that's a great point, um, and thing to collaborate as well. It also has a, ske- a scheduling aspect um, yes, uh, to the website as well, which will help us in the office. Also. Yeah, because you know you, you know where to come early, late, because all the schools have the same hour, on and off, and then in between. Yeah. Okay. Councilman uh, Diana, you had a question? Yes, for uh, David Bowie there. Uh, we <laughs> Bring it on. Um, for the pool passes, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, but we have two types, resident and non-resident. Mm-hmm. Okay, how will the program differentiate between resident and non-resident? Or is that something that the staff will have to look I'm over? To, yeah, I'm, we'll have to uh, work out some of those kinks. Okay. You may be able to pay online, but to get your card, you would still have to come into uh, come to us okay. uh, with your ID um, and, and two proofs uh, that you live there at your current address, and then we would print you out a card. So that would maintain. Okay. Uh, but at the very least, you'd be actually prepay, so you don't have to fill out all that paperwork when you get there. You would just have to approve that you're resident. We would get the roster that you've paid. You're good to go. Uh, just a matter of checking your ID and printing and taking your picture and taking your um, and printing out your card. Jim, correct so me if th- I'm th- that won't change, but it will make this process a lot faster. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we're, we're looking to implement this in a fa- in phases, right? right. Yeah. And so the first phase is our rec programs because that's the easiest mm-hmm. thing to do. Uh, second phase, correct me if I'm wrong, are our camps. Correct. Uh, and then the third phase would be our, our pool passes because there is a verification requirement. Um, and, and so we are still working internally to figure out the most efficient way uh, because, again, and Alice, you know this because from being the town clerk, I mean, how much data do we actually have in, in town hall? I mean, it's a lot. So we're trying to figure out, you know, what, what data points can we use that we have internally to make that process easier. Well, the so, interesting part that eventually um, if you own your, own your house, the – your department could match it up against the assessor's I, record. I agree completely, yes. So um, yeah. the, the, the hard part would be if you're renting. Then right. you, then you right. physically you probably would have to come in. Yeah. And we might be able to do that. It's, it's your point. So you're, you're cutting down uh, the demand for people to physically show up mm-hmm. um, in, in that aspect. So that's still, again, it's a mm-hmm. phased process, I think, is how we're, we're, we're approaching this. Yes. Right. Rec first, camp second, pools third. Uh, and that gives a, t- a staff time to acclimate with the new program. Uh, it gives a public time to understand the new program, but it also gives the, us here in, in, in government time uh, to make sure that, you know, the verification process are in place, the, the, you know, the necessary documents for camps are able to be processed. And so we're not fully rushing into this head first, but taking that piece by piece. Sure. So, Jim, is, it, is there any picture ID uh, uh, part of the things? You know, uh, sometimes you may have a picture, you know? Yeah. Is, is there a place to put a picture uh, on the website uh, for the so, different people on your roster? Make okay. sure I don't skip past that question. The answer is yes, but I also wanted to address Councilman's question about validating different yeah. membership yeah. Yeah. types. Yeah, great. Please. Right? Sometimes you have a difference in residency, and you want to make sure that the, re- the non-residents are playing a premium, mm-hmm. right? That's right, the exactly. way it needs to be. You don't want them sort of scamming the system and paying a resident rate. Nobody wants that. Um, there's also va- there, it has very very strong validation tools so that in some communities uh, you might have a family pool pass that you pay a lump sum for and a family is defined as two adults and uh, two other full time family members or two children mm-hmm. and then our system is intelligent enough to determine that if you try to sign up three other people in the family you know maybe grandma grandpa and uncle Joe are living in the house. It will detect that, and it will apply the adult each additional person price mm-hmm. to that, awesome. so that the so that That's the really so that cool. the community yeah, and the town is actually collecting yeah. all the money that it's due, and it's not being gamed because the system isn't intelligent enough to keep up. That's awesome. So yeah, That's so it does so it does all that. How about the stepchildren and stuff like that? I mean, that there's another uh, you know requirement. That'll be that'll be more of a policy in, internally. So if you want to set up, you have a stepchild. Or somebody in the family, maybe an aunt, an uncle, maybe somebody who's not well and you want to take them into your home, you can make them part of your family. It would be the policies internally at the Recreation Department that determine how you treat them with regard to pricing and registration rules. What what type of uh, protection from uh, outside intrusion is on this system? There's a lot of personal information on there. So this, it's all SQL Server, it's all PCMs, or, you know, PCI, PCI compliant from the standpoint of uh, credit card processing, PCI is a payment card industry. 
Um, it's DSS compliant, so we've never had any issues. So we've been in the cloud. So we've been in the cloud for 17. We've been in the cloud for 17 years. Now, no, 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 nobody is nobody's fully safe yeah, from yeah, being right. hacked. That's a, it's an impossibility. Uh, the nice thing about Community Pass is that we're we're not a high value target. It's not the, the information that's kept on Community Pass is, is not what people are looking for. They're not looking for names and addresses and phone numbers and email addresses. They're hitting the places that have the credit cards, and we don't store the credit cards on our system. But our, you know, our system, our, it stores them someplace yeah, else. Um, so in addition to being want. secure in the first place, firewalls, right, password-protected accounts. Um, but you know the data mining, you know, I mean, that's another big commodity, you know. <laughs> and you can, you know, distill anything you want out of that. The age distribution, the what you use, what games, and then they have their own advertisement, you know. The commercial comes in here also. You know, I mean, you click it in, they say, how many people like the baseball? You know, manufacturing, so many other data mining, which we have to be careful, you know? Sure, sure. There's, there's, there's a lot of, you know, there's criminal minds out yeah, there that if know. they can get their hands on the information, fortunately, we haven't had that issue because you know, we have strong I, I security. Think like you said, um, the, if we're going to focus on something like that, then we're not going to move. No, they have to be careful. Like, you cannot give away free key to your home, you know, to upside. Anybody right. can get in there. People open the window, they get through that, too. It's a and, getting and look, complicated. Uh, well, I'm not saying that. People, people are still welcome to no, sign are, up by hand. Are, well, that's the other thing. They, they don't have to sign up on that. Correct. Sure yeah, they you know. can always come to the office. Yeah. Councilman Patel, they can always come to the office. We're not we're not trying to discourage people from coming to the office. No, we're just this saying is really good. I'm this is this is another option, a more you know, frankly, and for some people, a much more convenient option. You'll still be able to pay cash. You'll still be able to pay by check. Right. No, um, this so is a good program. The, the I, I, in hand option is always going to be there. You can still fill out the registration. Right. Form. You can do it. You can do it any way that you're most comfortable. Yes. Uh, but this just gives us another option that we currently don't have. Jim, do we store stuff like that on the computer anyway? Which sort of no, there, there is no storage of any credit cards. So no, no, not credit cards, but the information we input it uh, anyway. We, we do store uh, addresses and names and ages. Down, right. down, yeah. down, is down. This system uh, that we currently uh, use just as an cloud. expansion. N no, no. It's in the cloud. So, brand, new brand new. Okay. Yeah. But it's something similar. We're looking forward to uh, but, uh, a major upgrade. Right. Oh, no, no, I understand that. Yeah. In, in functionality. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. This, this is like Big Brother. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I invent the phone, but not. <laughs> Great. Tim, can you continue ah, with the uh, demonstration? I can. So here, I'm, here I've, I've clicked through. Um, it, in, in the previous page, it rang up the first, uh, the first child at $75, the second child at $70, because the, policy, the pricing policy was to give a discount to the sibling. Right? Okay. So it automatically calculates that, right? So it can support your pricing rules, and now it's going to ask for the information. These are these are forms and fields that uh, that Jim and his team will will basically dictate. So they can ask as much or as little as they like. They can make fields required or not required. Here you can see, if you notice, I didn't I didn't type in any of this while uh, while they were chatting. This is all auto populated. So there's auto populate settings that you can turn on and turn off. Just a nice convenient feature there. If the both children have the same uh, same information, you could click same as above. Again, just trying to help people get through that registration process with as little effort as possible. So I'm going to click through here. All that data now is stored in the database and accept accessible through our reporting engine. Here is our different uh, codes of conduct, legal, legal waivers, policies, so on and so forth. Sorry, that's okay. Do you have a code of conduct? Does the, does the Parks Department, or Rec Department, excuse me, have a code of conduct that... Yeah, I mean, we do have something similar. Yes, we can post and cut a conduct out there. For sure. So, but we have one. That's my yes. question. Okay, great. And that's becoming a little bit more important because, it, you know, sure. the world's just becoming more and more litigious, and the town needs more and more right. protection. Some solutions can't support multiple policies. Right. We have some customers <laughs> now that are putting on six, seven, eight policies that you have to acknowledge before you can register and pay. Um, it's not ideal, but it does protect the town. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no problem. You can see it's a very linear process here. This is a third step which can be eliminated from the registration process. If you don't want to collect donations, remove step three, step three, and you'll end up with four total steps. Great. But donation for a town or Donation for anything you like, anything your heart desires. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think we don't yeah. want to do that. Okay, you can remove that. The point being is we can remove that step. Right. Yeah. Optional feature there. Um, Right, and you can then you get to your final page. You can see that Zoe or Bergen pays seventy-five. Zoe pays 
a 70 if I want to remove anything because I've you know, decided I don't want to do it, or I can pay by credit card, e-check. This is a demo account, so I'm not going to pay by credit card, but it would be the normal page that requires all your credit card information there. And so we go ahead and send payment. Tim, can you tell us which credit cards we're going to be able to use? Sure. Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and American Express. Okay. Don't leave a hand without it. Okay. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so here you go. And this is our or final Or stay payment. at home with it. Finish. You know, and if we want to go back into the registration process, we can. And that, that's, so that's, that's the public side of it. The, the administrative side of it would probably bore most of you to death unless you're in recreation no, we administration. Oh, no, so we don't want to go there. But we did go through that with our staff. Uh, the staff is very excited about uh, taking this on and yep. having something that's very user-friendly. Uh, I understand also in the contract uh, that there are trainings for the staff as well. Web-based trainings that you're going to be able to provide to our staff to make sure that they're efficient uh, exactly. in, in the program. There's a guided implementation. In layman's terms, we're going to hold your hand through the whole thing. We're going to do a lot of the work and apply our expertise of many, many years to get it set up properly to make sure that the validation rules, the residency rules, the requirements, all the documents that people need to submit, the forms, the information that needs to be collected, the reporting, the financials, all of that is going to be buttoned up then we'll go ahead and we'll train you, and then we'll launch it, and the community will be thrilled. I always it's loved awesome. uh, uh, doing a working with a company, not in the beginning. <laughs> Once you've gotten like 20 customers and they've worked right. out the kinks, right, right. then I come in. And that's I'm another like, reason, though, that we want right. we think it's important for it to be phased, because I don't <laughs> want to tell people that they're going to be able to get their pool pass online from day one, yeah. regardless of the verification uh, structure that we have to come up with. But I want to make sure that I think, I think the rec programs are going to allow us to ease into this. Correct, correct. And make sure that we are great. proficient and effective and we've got the whole thing down before we start taking everybody else. I think a lot so of it's young a really people good first very step. happy you're doing this. And administratively, only the, the department head or your subordinate they, they control the, the data, who, you know, registration and who. Yeah. And, and just to go further, uh, we've worked with uh, Mr. Rodriguez here uh, on the contract as well. So uh, they, they've gone back and forth, and they oh, finally yeah. have an agreement Excellent. that uh, oh, both the town way. and Community Pass uh, can can really uh, be happy. I think with. it was the first contract we sent to Adam actually to review. So. It was. <laughs> <laughs> thank so you, Adam. He did a stellar job. Yeah. So thank no, you. I, thank I think any other questions for Tim while we have him, um, <laughs> or nope. anybody? Congratulations to us. Thank you. Tim, we appreciate it. And I told you. you what I tell you when I saw you, right? I told you I was going to break the streak. <laughs> you get it done. That's right. I told you I was going to break the streak. So we're going to. We're very we're excited thank about you bringing and this on. Congratulations. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank, thank you. you so much. Appreciate Thanks, it. Tim. Thanks. Thanks. All right. That's great. So we will move that forward at next week's meeting. In the 21st yep. century. We'll move that into the next week's meeting. <laughs> I feel like Buck <laughs> Rogers. <laughs> No, Jim, right don't go anywhere. I'm not. I'm not. I just want to. All right. To next, thank we're going to invite like, Matt, Matt Talbert. I thought um, was Al coming. No, he couldn't make it. Oh, Al's it? not coming. Oh, okay. Hey, Matt. Hello. I'm Where happy to see you feeling better. Thank you. So uh, Matt uh, is one of our Parks and Rec commissioners. We appreciate you being here, uh, and I know that you've been very involved in, I think, all the. Things Granite left on the, on the on the on the everything but the golf here. course. Every day. Everything but the bo everything but but Tom Diana's favorite golf course. <laughs> uh, so, so j just to go Next. further, um, the uh, I know you guys know, remember this, but uh, the commission approved a camera project. Uh, Signal Intel has done an amazing job in setting up those cameras, and Adam, please. we've, oh, we've worked with the police on okay. making sure that, that they have um, all the appropriate uh, links to. Uh, access our cameras, which is very important. Uh, but there is one camera that. Okay, sorry, my there, apologies. That's fine. There's one camera that we are having issues with at Legacy Field, um, and the best spot to to use it they is are. on some of the pipeline property and and some of their devices. They're so gonna, they're gonna take the money from us now? No, 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 absolutely not. This no, no, no. This camera will benefit both us and them. Make sure no one's on the pipeline doing anything. Make sure no one's coming into our park illegally. So this is just a basic agreement. Once again, Mr. Rodriguez has looked over, at least has been sent over recently. Yeah, it's a very basic agreement. I think there's some probably 
wordsmithing things that I'd like to do to it. And there is one sort of significant issue that I think, you know, we can discuss now uh, if you want. Yeah. Um, but, but basically, the way it's written, um, it, once we install the camera and the equipment, the, the way it's drafted, if they damage it. Who's they? Um, Enbridge. Enbridge. We're basically on the hook, and they don't have to pay for it. Um, so they they don't use this specific area much, but right. once again, it doesn't matter. They could use it once, and, 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 and yeah, yeah. Correct. but anyone could damage it. it. It's it's in a very vulnerable area. It's going to be high enough to be uh, out of reach. Yeah, but I don't think they would intentionally. What kind of camera? Is there a camera? I mean, yes. Whoever damaged it would have them on camera. We'd still have exactly. that recorded. Yeah. Adam, <laughs> yeah. Thoughts? Well, look, I certainly have no reason to think they would intentionally damage it. The point is, the way it's drafted, they could, and we would have no recourse. So, you know, I can we can I, try to soften the language. I'm not I, sure I that there's enough money there to worry about if it was damaged. Yeah, how much does a camera cost? About $285. Correct. Yeah. Plus installation. We'll spend, spend more arguing it out. Yeah, exactly. I, I, that's I, also correct. I, I agree with what you're saying, but... Yeah, look, it's a, it's he's that's not paying a, us hourly. That's we're a not, policy. He's not charging us hourly. It's a so it's, it's a, a policy. <laughs> There's other policy things going on. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I just right. raised the, it's, it's a le I just raised the issue. No, I appreciate. No, no, no. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, thank you. Um, okay. You want to do this right now, or you want to? Well, we'd love to get the ball rolling. We'd love to get it second. How many cameras told you? Uh, contingent on Adam uh, reviewing. Yeah, well, we have a motion and we have a second, so there's, there's no contingent. There's some just tweaking language that is I'll, only propose, but oh, oh, otherwise, okay. no, it's fine. Total... Only one camera is so, on so, this. But, Hold on. We have a, well, you, you, he, you well, wanna, he, he wants to. Do you want to make the motion words, with any tweaking that Adam with, needs? With amendments? All of, the, all of them yeah. except that. Okay, so, the mo so do we have to recall that? First motion, or can we say the motion is well, on the it's motion with amendments? Motion with approved amendments from the town attorney. Yeah. And, and a second by me. And a second by aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. Thank you. So there will be one list which will be monitored by Enbridge. Oh, oh no, no. No, 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 no. They have no control of the camera. Oh, oh. No, no. We, we, Good. we are in total like control. Okay. Great. All right. All right. And then who will be monitoring it? Who is it going to recording? Uh, 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 our Parks and Rec department? department. Oh, you have a separate. Okay. So um, so we, we've obviously had a lot of deal with contractors throughout the years. And um, we've kind of noticed that the town itself does not have a lien agreement uh, per se, language ready to go in case we, we need a lien agreement with a vendor. So in this case, just came up with one of our companies, uh, one of the last payments we had to make. Uh, over at Granite Knolls, and it's just something that you know wanted us to take a look at and possibly have. Uh, yep. Adam has more specific language um, on on the lien release. Um, can you explain this, well, Mr. Adam? Rodriguez? Mr. Rodriguez, can you just explain this to everybody, please? And I think this sure. will help us in the future. Contract. In the construction industry, uh, a lien release waiver is basically uh, you can think of it as almost like a receipt for payment. Okay. You generally don't release funds under the contract until you get a lien release waiver, and they usually go in stages. It's usually progress payments under a construction contract. So if the project is 25% done, you, you, before you pay the 25%, you get a lien release waiver for 25% of the amount. So it's basically proof that oh, – okay. uh, and, and that's essentially what it is. It's a, it's a release of any uh, right to, to lien against the project or the property, et cetera, for the, you know, the amount. And what we're talking about here – the stage we're at in a specific project that, that came up is it, it would be a final lien release waiver. And generally, you know, the general contractor will get them from the subcontractors and the, and the folks that provide materials because it's in their interest to do so too, because the funds flow from them. Um, but so we're, we're going to work with the, the, the main contact point to make sure that, you know, we have that online on, on this project. Usually the town would go through a punch list with all of its departments to make sure everything they've gotten in place. And usually, sometimes there's a five-year window between um, plantings for wetlands that it's got to remain on the books for five years. So, yeah, this is, this is fine. Right? Uh, another question, you know, you, is this different uh, than This version, uh, he already made amendments. This is, to, so this, is, yes. this is a rough draft. This is going to be a boilerplate uh, to keep uh, the town from being held liable. I've, I'm develop, we're developing a boilerplate document to be okay. used. Okay. They're going to have to be modified project to project. Of, of but, course, yeah. of course. But, yeah, that's, that's sure. the intention. Okay. 
And so, the, so to be clear, the, the town is not signing this. This is a document that's signed by the contract. We generally it to the contract. Yeah, you send it to the contractor, and I get it. Typically, yeah. the way this works is in the contract with the contractor, there will be language for a lien release attached that's already you know negotiated, correct? And that it's a requirement under the work. Okay. Um, so uh, you know, now it's officially open. Do you have any kind of document for the town board that how much how uh, how much is the warranty for each? You we know, do we do have yeah, warranties we, on everything up there. Yeah, but, but we uh, don't know. You know, I mean, we don't know that you, you need the money, so we want to make sure that we'll have in a budget. You know, or, or money for what? Whatever something goes wrong, you know, if you have to, you know, if it's not covered, we have to spend the money. Right? You have you have you have warranties on all the equipment. We have yeah. warranties on yeah. everything that's up there. They've already come back and did some warranty work. That's why we actually have a final payment. Okay. We held back 5% on them. Do, do you have a copy of the mm. warranties for Granite Knolls in your office that you're aware of? No, probably not. not if we can get a copy of the warranties, this way if Councilman Patel has questions that he at least has a central yeah, issue. I, mean, I believe there's different of... contracts for those, the buildings that we're specifically talking that, about are the that bathrooms. That would be in your big and then documents. There's obviously the bigger project and there's the turf correct? and things of that nature. That was, so. a, uh, that was a purchase right. off the buy boards, right. so it's not really a big document. Mm -hmm. It's the it's in the uh, invoice itself. Right, exactly. But that okay. is a product. Uh, you know, warranty for deficiency or defect. <clears throat> this is, you know, the kids came in and they got quite a few already fences, already bent up, you know, the wires and like mm -hmm. that, you know, those kind of vandalism type right, things, yeah. you know. So do we need have... to give some more money? Because it's already happened three, four times. I've seen it. Uh, you know? Again, I, I just, I would feel more comfortable having a copy produced mm -hmm. and, and left in the town attorney's office. Just so that we know it's in one central location. So if any of us have a question, we know where it is. Mm -hmm. yep. If any staff has a question, we know where it is. Just safekeeping. Do you guys use the, the new system, the computer system? Because The KVS system? No. it's Or the work order system? system? What was the system that I, that I came back for? Uh, you? Do you remember the name of it? No. Okay, know, because that like system was set up for this exactly. Or where it takes a project, the, it takes the project the from the beginning to, to the, the end. end. Yeah. It has everything in it. No. You know, I'll talk to Jimmy about it okay. later. Good. Um, Good. Yeah. I'm not sure that they're used. All right, well, let's move over to the next item, town code updates. Why don't you start at the, why don't we sort of ball fields and work our way back? Okay. Um, there's, there's a number of items that uh, just kind of going through the town code the, of things that you know, reflect on recreation um, that are a little but bit I, of... I, I didn't mean to mess you up. You, you're, you have paperwork. So why don't you, whatever's... More convenient. I mean, for I you. can go in any order. You can go in any order. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't want to mess you up. I apologize. So, so there, there's things in this, in in not only the I, the things I had prior were more on the local code, but there's more on the state level uh, when we're talking about the ball fields. It's always been told to us that um, it was illegal to uh, advertise uh, on our own fields right. uh, mm -hmm. that we couldn't do it. But uh, there, there's um, the uh, luckily we have a town supervisor that actually wrote the law on this. Okay. Um, so, uh, Matt, One correct two. me if I'm wrong, um, you, you did ha have this come up on your We had this come up desk. when I was uh, during my tenure at Senator Murphy in the state Senate. Uh, mm -hmm. This, uh, what we did for the town of Newcastle, they wanted to put uh, signage uh, or sell sponsorship signage at, uh, I believe, three of their parks. That's great. And so it requires state legislation and state uh, authority to do it. We have the legis legislation which was passed and signed into law in front of us. I have, uh, last night I emailed uh, both Senator Harcum uh, and Assemblyman Byrne to let them know that this was going to be a discussion item tonight, uh, and they offered their full support in any way they can provide it, and they're happy to pick up the torch once we hand it to them, hopefully, and, and run with it. And that's great if we can get that torch moving, but uh, we, we discussed this um, where the town code comes in, is we need to decide what kind of signage we're going to put up there. Can we just... Just let anyone put up any color, any kind of thing, or are, in our town code, are we going to be more specific with what they're putting up? We want to manage uh, the beauty of our parks, so I think it's important to maybe mention that in our town So code. I think, but it, it, I agree with you, uh, and that's something that we're going to have to address. I would recommend, and, and Alice, you, you know this uh, from your experience here, we need to move on this rather quickly because the legislative session ends in June. Actually, it ends earlier this year, uh, and they're already pushing local legislation uh, through their process. Um, so yeah, we need, to we need so I think it's a dual track. So I think we have to do a dual track to make sure we get the authorization from the, from the state to, to initiate this, uh, this program. And then in the meantime, we can work with our department heads to come up with the proper uh, language for our code. Well, and the good part is we, 
have a gentleman from YT there. Is that what his he shirt can, says? He can he can he can work from outside. <laughs> yeah. And 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 tag on to our, our our letters of support because I know for years you yeah. said you wanted to do this. A support letter from YAC, you know, SOAC, YYSC. You know, yes, the other thing that yes. we need to be clear about as a board, and and so let's go through the pro- the pro- I would recommend from the board is to pass a resolution next week, um, laying out really uh, what we're looking to do, so that this way our, our our state lawmakers basically just plug and play. I, they have this legislation. I, I sent it to them. Their staff have has, has a leg- legislation, so they have the model. We just have to give them where we want it to go, right? And That's what it and, and what it's going to go towards, because one of the things that you have to deal with is uh, it just can't go to the general fund. Um, and so, you know, that's a conversation that we can have, um, in you know, in the next you know, well, leading like, up to I this. Like but, in their law, that it goes back into replacement and, and refurbishment mm-hmm. of things at the park. It well, should I, be going I would, back to these personally. Fields. I would I would like to see it go right to turf replacement. I would like yeah. to see the money go right back to turf replacement. Um, you know, we did have a, a conversation. I had a conversation uh, with our comptroller uh, about mm-hmm. this p- specific issue. Um, she agreed that that was that was the probably the best decision that we can make regarding this money expensive. because I don't think people understand how expensive it is. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, the gentleman in the YAC sweatshirt who's going to write a letter of support has been harping on turf replacement how for money? quite some time. Each, 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 each turf like field would be about five hundred to six hundred thousand yeah. dollars. How many years? Yeah, yeah. twelve to fifteen. Yeah. Twelve to fifteen years. It so we need, and so down. we're already behind the eight ball in in some aspects because Certainly we need legacy. to build the reserve right to be able to spend the, the money. The turf replacement comes. line is currently at a uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, so and we're at year nine uh, of the field. Is right. that for legacy? Correct. And how much is the preventive maintenance? You got to do all the time continuous maintenance. Well, no, know? but this is this is specifically for turf replacement, not to be swept and used for maintenance. So mm-hmm. this is going to soften the I agree soften with the you. blow. I agree. Because as as Matt and and Jimmy just said, you're looking at at least a half a million dollars if you're lucky uh, to get the turf replacement done. We are only a halfway there, and we and if you think about the the time frame, we're looking at three years. And this might get it's a 12 the to 15 legislators year license. And then once we spend that, I'm oh, sorry. Because yeah. it's such a big ticket item. Right. Well, well, well we, we, we didn't use the field for three years. Does that make any difference? That actually, uh, from what I'm told, it hurts one the field. Hurts no, the yeah. field. One year. It was shut one and a half years. It was shut for a year, yeah. The more it lays dormant, the more it hurts. So I would recommend to the board, you know, it's two things. I think we need to take this in stride. So I would recommend that it's Granite Knolls and Legacy as the two places where we're able to do this. Um, uh, number one. And then number two, I think it needs to be specifically lined for our turf replacement fund. Totally great. Yeah, so yeah that, that we have that, a that, revenue that, stream that going no into our turf replacement fund. I have another light item that came up in the commission meeting. Uh, if you look at our line item for turf replacement fund, mm-hmm. uh, it specifically only states legacy. Uh, we might want to look into changing the name of that line Good. where it says legacy or alter fields or legacy and granite knolls. Um, I don't know what the appropriate language will be, uh, but there's something we want to be more specific I, on. I, I did, I did speak to Pat about that, and I thought that the request from the board was that they were separated. Okay. No, they should be. So yeah, and and she said that they they Different will, years. and and depending, right. it, it should, a lot it depends on to. how. Yeah. A lot uh, depends I, I don't on agree. How you guys? Uh, I don't know. Wait, hold on. Let's think about this. I, I don't agree with that at all. But well, you don't I, agree with separating the two? No, not why? at all. Look, we have a line that's deficient. We don't have enough money. So if we take, why would you separate it? I agree. With you. So why would you separate when you can create enough money to then raise for? The so one field we, we need, do, so I agree. Then, they're not going to go at the same time. Yeah, no, exactly. The infield oh, or the see, baseball field is going to go, okay. and the outfield may not okay. go. And one but field. I think to your point is we should include granite knolls, so Correct. it's not just legacy Slash. fields. Yes, yes. It'll be le- legacy fields and granite knolls. And, and then, okay. then once, we'll once legacy is done, now you're Probably starting to raise money watching, for so. granite that, knolls. That makes more sense. That Correct. does make sense. Okay, Thank you. Thank Jim. You. There is something here. It's a sale of advertising. It is a sign. And that's the fine. size of the sign, the color, and everything. Yeah. Think, that, that was that's my all, aspect with that's the... all TBD, and, and that's something I want to bring John Taggart in as well, just from his expertise. Yeah, like you know, yeah, about but, yeah, no, but electronic. You know, this we, will be electronic sign mostly, right? Well, no, no, no. Oh, these oh. are these are going to be on the outf- You know, and, and ideally, what we've been discussing is putting on the outfield right. fence. So it's not electronic. You can't. You know, that's probably not the best idea of. Uh, no. The, Banner no, type signs, uh, yeah, like well, banner that you can hang and, on. The back uh, I would banners. definitely recommend against banner type okay. signs. We do have a little bit of a wind issue up at Granite. Uh, well, yeah, but you, we. It's more about. It's more about you know. Jimmy and I had this conversation. You're gonna make everything green and black. 
It's going to look nice. It, but we don't know. We have to make that decision, you know, and that's something that I think, again, dual track so we can uh, make sure that in the code it, pro- it properly reflects. Yeah, it's coordinated. Yeah. Size and everything. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, and you're, you're amazing at transitions, let me tell you, because <laughs> you, t- you brought up John Taggart and uh, – I have another issue with another item in the code. He's not here anymore. Yeah, yeah. I know, but uh, I did. He knows when to run. We did did talk about it. Um, I'm going to have you you look down at H. H is what what affects me, but this town code uh, is the lighting code. Um, But H is what specifically I'm here for. So uh, and, and, and Matt, one, can, yeah, Matt can elaborate on this? You, you know, on this. Okay. why didn't you give us a week before? Because I have a leaky memory, you know? I can't read this much no. fast like a computer, you know? I'm sorry, well, you, you only have to read the bottom line that says H. Sign the, it? All right. A, 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 H is the only line I'm, I'm, right, so I'm asking for you to look at uh, on the so bottom. So H currently reads, sports fields may be lit provided the lights are only on when the field is in use and the light fixtures are fully shielded and properly aimed at the intended field of play. Now, we have the most up-to-date, high-tech lights that there are, LED lights, that have no spill on them. You do not need a shield on these lights. They're not condescent lights. So like our the lights ones. currently don't have shields. These they, lights, well, that's not necessarily true. Some, some do. Uh, some do, and, and we didn't necessarily have to, but it did help a little bit. But you didn't need shields on every single one to uh, create uh, spill issues. We, we had some lights that were aimed a bit higher uh, to catch different parts of the outfield and such. I gotcha. And so some of those lights do have shields, but it is not required on every single light that we have because the technology has changed over these years. So, so you're so saying the fully shielded piece is what is... That's is, my is, biggest is, issue. Is fully is shielded should be removed. Should be removed. You know what? And, and, this uh, hasn't been changed in 25 uh, years. Right. Yes. And, technology. And, 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 we probably didn't have the technology. Technology is. Years ago, right? yeah, exactly. yeah. So it's fine. So, so, so we, we can condescent lights. You needed to have shields to keep uh, the spill from happening. Now the lights with the LEDs. Yeah. Right. So, right. I got you. But you know, do you have so, some kind of a what you know dimming type the thing or certain lights yeah. goes yeah. off when nobody's no, there? You know. This is something I'm just bringing to your attention. I don't need a decision now, but I did talk to you. Do you have a recommendation of what the language should be changed to? Or does, if you spoke with John, what John's recommendation I was? Think we, I think we can get recommendation. Yeah, I think yeah, you know I, what? I, if you but go we'd, we'd, had, we'd eliminate board, shield no. lights, um, yes. shields no on LEDs. Because, again, not all of our lights are fully shielded. That's right. the issue. C- correct. Understand. What about correct. properly shielded? Because I know that we've been getting some... Some uh, complaints yeah. about yeah. the amount of light that's up there during so, these games. So, if and so we want to, so forth. if we want to talk about granite knolls, um, we we are at the top of a mountain. Mm-hmm. Everything else around us is below us. If you look up, you're going to see the lights. There is nothing that can be done. We've we've re-aimed the lights. Jim and I walked around with, with a, a illumination gauge and, and looked at what this spill is. So, if, if this table's the field. Over here, we're dark. I can I can turn yeah. off one all-purpose field, right. and one be totally dark, right. and the other one is lit. You're looking at about like 15 looms in the middle of the field, and then when you step into the parking lot, 0.02. <laughs> I mean, it's unheard of. You know, it, 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 it's unheard of like 10 years job. ago to even have that conversation. Oh, that's incredible. That's so, incredible. So, so, let me tell you, is it what kind of a material? The light. He's made up all the colors of the rainbow, okay? So if you shine it, the, the, you know, the red one, the red one and the green, green will, will absorb and everything else will reflect. So depending on what things you shining on the light, you know? Right now, this light is coming. Everything is white, right? Yeah. All the color of the rainbow makes it white. That's why it's white. If you take it out, the red one, it'll come red, blue, green. So this is kind of things to be adjusted. And LED is different than uh, this light. Oh, no, well, the, no, no, well, the... the, the, so, the, the Lighting system that we purchased for Granite Knolls is highly technical. It, it, it's got um, TIF lenses in it that aim towards the location we want the light to go. Right. So that's one of the main reasons it's why we don't need the shields right. on it. Right. right. So, you know, so <laughs> in clarification, there's, there's a difference between being able to see illumination and spill. Because right. I think that's, I think that's, that's where people the, are having the, the issue. Yeah. And by by the by the uh, definition of spill and what is required, I believe we are far beyond what the requirements are in spill. That's because correct. Of the, the technical aspect of these lights. I think with, and, I, I, I'm sorry. That's okay. No. I, I just to, just to put a fine point. I agree with Alice. I think we should just engage John and Adam just to make sure. 
We have some really smart people. Yeah, I'm sure there's other things in this lighting law, too, that are a bit outdated. That's what they do. So maybe we do ask our our planning, our town planner, our planning board to take a look at Both of them to help mm -hmm. you, because that's what they do. But I was going to say, just take a look at the law, just the code itself, to see if it needs updated, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, While we're looking at this one piece, you might as well look at the whole. Ms. Rodriguez, yes, no? Yeah, of never course. Finish. I know. Just yeah. more stuff, more stuff for Adam. You go to any uh, stadium, uh, right? And there are a thousand cars that different some color, of them are shielded. But each there one has a reflective yes. coating. We, okay? So, so the light up the Old, in the outfield of baseball field, we have some you know? homeowners that are Spread nearby. Okay, else. so Physics, we, we okay? took some extra precautions there you to knock the light down and make sure that it was not it was leading into their into their yard. Right. Can they see the ball fields? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, but all the car, all the car park all around, they reflect the light. We just anyway, put anyone, yeah, no, they, they, that's they, not necessarily you know, true. The cars have the, the cars have no uh, opportunity to go and update it. Uh, there's no problems with the cars. Yes. Yes. You know, so, even even the reflection off the cars, the on we do not have a problem. The, the lights the lights aren't Everybody hitting the cars. Right. That's the thing. <laughs> the, light, the lights are not getting and to you the know cars. Ultimately, they went, they put them down, and they're fine. Yeah. Um, right. so just saying that I, was there. I, 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 I had one last issue with, oh, with, with, the, with the town code. code. Issue, right? Okay, well, so we, we've one. we've kicked the can on this um, for many years. Uh, you know, all my time uh, with the commission, and it came up this at the commission good. meeting as well. Mm -hmm. um, wh where do we stand uh, with with in regards to smoking in our parks? Um, smoking and vaping. No, smoking, right? excuse, thank you. Smoking, smoking and vaping. vaping. Uh, there, there is a look. We, the commission the commission looked into this uh, a couple years back. Uh, we loved the Lewisboro. Hold on, these two. We love the Lewisboro uh, code uh, on smoking. So here I have our own town code, and I had the Lewisboro code uh, back to back for you guys to kind of take a look at. And um, you know, uh, many many towns th throughout this great Thank state you. of ours. Uh, has gone away from uh, smoking. Uh, I mean, when you think parks, you're thinking about public health. Um, so, you know, is smoking uh, a place uh, for our parks? Uh, th that's a question for you guys to Well, first take off, uh, All the first, thing that, jumps out in is, is the first thing that jumps out of me is the fact that our code does not recognize no smoking in public vaping buildings. or e-cigarettes. It also has smoking. Uh, once again, we have a dated uh, aspect of our code. And, and I'm sorry, what was that, Councilman Lactor? Uh, Alcohol. No, a, this has to be, the whole law has to be updated. A, I all agree. smoking within the town halls would be confined to the basement, basement kitchen. kitchen. This is but, really this is strange. Well, the, yeah, well, no, that's because it's so old. I think they changed the law, if I'm not mistaken, back in the 80s. No, 1990. 19, yeah, no, no, the right. smoking law. Well, the question yeah, becomes, correct. the other question, at, and I asked Mr. Rodriguez, I don't even know, is our code in compliance with the Clean Air Act? It's not. Probably not. So if we're not in compliance with the Clean Air Act, I mean, I listen, it, it's, one, it's something that I've discussed with my staff about, uh, you, know, town, you know, town facilities, and, and I'm glad that the commission has brought this forward. Um, clearly another, another need for us. Again, the fact that we don't, it does say sm smoking within the town hall. Who would have thought? Why are people smoking that? Anybody wants to smoke, got to go downstairs to the kitchen. It's smoking down all of It's not against the law. Who knew? It has an overreach to town facilities. Um, while I was alcohol, still the clerk, alcohol, we did, we it's do, um, addressing that right now. we you do sure bingo you know over at the um, Elks Lodge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had to go over to the Elks Lodge and explain to them the people who sat there smoking cigarettes while they did bingo. They could no longer smoke cigarettes, and that was a hundred years ago. And hmm. so, and again, the, yep. the 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 state was the one that said you got to do this. It's a town. It's acting as a town facility. So I think we have the right, whether it's a park or anything. Well, no, that, they, they've actually they've increased the smoke, the no smoking laws, restaurants, bars. Yeah, that's all excellent. Of that, right? Yeah, I, re I remember when I managed a nightclub, the the nicotine and smoke on my clothing used to make it stand up. The really? next day, because it was so. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, white shirts would be yellow. Okay, this nice is sponge. Okay. Uh, poppers. But, uh, <laughs> my, uh, I have a question, <laughs> okay? You nice know, at the town, town parks, any place here, we if somebody has an open uh, uh, can of bottle or, bottle or something, beer, wine. I'm sorry, what was that, Councilman? If Houston. any alcohol beverage, they will arrest you in a town. That's right, right. Okay, so then what? Well, I, see, I mean, it's, it, I, I really want to thank the commission for bringing this to our attention. Uh, I mean, it's just obviously we need to take a hard look Certainly at this. Certainly vaping. And, no, I mean, you, you know, want to have a, a you know, rental out place, a party, special, maybe they need a permit, but individually. There are a lot of people smoking uh, in the parks. 
You're speaking about our pavilions and stuff like that. I, I think the biggest issue with smoking is really our events that include our parks. You know, you'll have certain bigger events where there'll be smoking of cigars or cigarettes or what have you, and where people are stagnant in place. Um, that's kind of where we have the biggest issues, where you're in someone else's you know private space and and they're smoking like right in front of you. Uh, that's where we have our biggest issues with smoking. Uh, but, yeah, we certainly find uh, cigarette butts uh, in our parks and our guys have to clean them up. I know we and... have Mr. Strauss here. I'm, I'm sure Mr. Strauss sees a bunch of this over at the track. When Remember he's, uh... at LAX, you I, have to go I, all I the way down something. to the back. For the yeah, city. Right. Little, 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 little <laughs> enclosure. It's like a, it was smoke, like a cubby. You can, he can smoke. smoke in the cubby. Um, and, and so maybe you can consider something like that. All right, so we appreciate that. We're going to definitely have to update this because... It's obviously obsolete. So you know the birds uh, in the New York City. Um, the final, the final okay. item on the agenda. Can I, I, can I, I need to add one more thing uh, that I don't have on here. I'm sorry for not adding it. Yeah, that's true. Um, I've been working with the town comptroller on, uh, as some of you may know, our uh, our trucks for our parks department have depleted over the years. Um, and and fortunately, we came to you, the town board, before Matt was here, unfortunately, um, and and asked for a utility a utility vehicle to set aside some money. Uh, so you granted me the, the PO. Thank you so much for that. But unfortunately, the um, the county Ford Mercury Inc. did not have that vehicle anymore. By the time we finally got the PO and everything was good, they like, oh, we don't have that utility truck anymore. In September, the trucks go away. Correct. And that's just exactly around the time that this, this, mm -hmm. we were granted the PO. So uh, after talking to Pat, she said, all right, well, we'll hold on to the PO. Okay. You, get, you try and work something out. We weren't able to work something out. But January uh, 1st, essentially, we put together a mini bid. Uh, and at that point, we, um, we've gone through this process, and I have the two people that bid on this mini bid right here. Uh, so we, we have the two vendors, uh, and, and we like the, the person that gave us a, the lowest amount, uh, which is on the is top here. The trucks? This is for the one truck, the oh, one wow. utility <laughs> truck. And I've since uh, released the, the PO 1902627, um, and back to the general fund. So what I'm here today is to request that money back to uh, execute this mini bid. Yeah. yeah, you gave it to You're gave done. It you're done, Jim. You That's it. it. You lost you it. I got swindled. No, no backsies, Jim. <laughs> you gave it back. He said that so, about his daughter. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't print it, uh, enough out for it. I only had one copy here. I know we had a you had a conversation with our comptroller about this. Absolutely. Uh, money for back. many months about okay. this, yes. And our comptroller is comfortable... <laughs> Making this decision, sure. making this publicly yes, announced. How absolutely. much money is that? Okay. Forty-four thousand was that? Is it? Is there so, any difference? So <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the PO was for sixty-nine. Uh, excuse me, forty-six thousand three hundred twenty-nine seventy-five. The, the new bid is forty-five thousand one hundred thirty-five dollars. So we're actually saving money with this whole. Oh, all right. Okay, we give you your <laughs> money back. We'll give oh, it back. All right. We'll give you your money right, back. So I'm, I'm going to have the comptroller draft. The necessary resolution for. for uh, uh, I'm coming for next, next week's meeting. Week, yeah. Yes. So exactly. you have your money back. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. We can certainly use a truck. But Great. it's only one vote. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first and department then, yeah. that ever gave money back. Yeah. <laughs> next item. Last item on the agenda. Last item on the agenda is the uh, Part 3 Golf Course. Um, I love coming here every week to talk about this project. And, you're uh, gonna keep and we so love we got, hearing from you. We want to know when it's going to be done. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not going anywhere, so I'll, I'll keep coming. Um, so uh, there's, there's been some movement, not a ton of movement. Um, I, we, we met with uh, the RC Recreation Development and John Taggarter. Uh, he walked us through the whole process with planning. Uh, he had a laundry list of, of packs that we gotta, they, they had to fill out. Uh, so, and he also asked them for the parking plan, the stormwater plan, and the um, and the tree plant. Um, but also at the same time, we're meeting with Michael, we're meeting with Michael Quinn. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm, sure. making, I'm just making sure you have questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're meeting with Michael Quinn to go through the more pertinent uh, issue, which is the DEC uh, violation uh, that we just had uh, on that site. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a non uh, non financial uh, non financial violation issue right. by the DEC. Correct. But who uh, will pay for the material and all that? Then? They have to pay for all the material. Right. Um, so, but right now we have 10 days to get that, that information into DEC. We have met with Mike and we've since filled out all the paperwork, got the backup documentation, uh, and that's really where a lot of their efforts were going to because <laughs> that has a tight time stamp. 
Uh, so that is in the process of, of we're in the process of getting that DEC permit, which is extremely important. We really can't do anything else until, until get we get that. Yeah. So that's where I kept focusing their energy. Um, unfortunately, we were going to meet with um, planning yesterday to kind of give them the status update. Uh, both gentlemen uh, fell ill, um, so they couldn't make the meeting. Uh, but we have rescheduled for the 24th, I believe, of February. They have since gotten an email. It's the next time that they meet for a work session. So we are on the planning work session uh, for the next next time they meet, uh, and this will give them a little bit more time to get through those packets uh, and get through all the other plans that were needed by John. Um, so um, we're moving. Uh, we're work communicating. In work in progress. And, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, golfing at some yep. point in the next year. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress, and I know. <laughs> You know, we, our, our department has really done a fine job coming together on this thing uh, once, uh, once we learned that there were issues. And, um, and so I just, again, want to thank all of our department heads, especially you, because I know you've taken, uh, you, you've really managed this issue personally and um, doing a fine job with it. And we just want to get it across thank the you. finish line. Can yeah, I just I, ask one question absolutely. about, so right now we're DEC. Yes. Um, not DEP, but DEC. Yeah. Um, once we're out of their hands, because generally they don't like to keep us in their hands that long. Once we're out of their hands, where are we? Uh, then we are in that planning process of, of going through piece by piece with, plan, uh, with planning that we have the appropriate parking. So there's not a traffic jam every time someone goes there. Uh, we need to then go into the uh, stormwater <laughs> aspect of if, when they do their construction, not the construction, when they do, when they do their uh, when they, when they, mediation and when they fix up the golf course, will the storm water go to the appropriate places because it is DC, DC wetlands. Well, that is me, also re required I'm kind um, of, I'm kind of with the DC permit. Because that is something that the person that got the lease. Correct. To do. So that's, that's their job. Yeah. So just to catch you up, uh, which I've said before, uh, Rocco had a lot of this work already done, so it, it was it was kind of easy to fill out the DEC yeah, paperwork I remember. because a, a lot of it was already done. But it's a, it's a, it basically <laughs> the best way I can explain it is imagine a puzzle. You, you have all the pieces of the puzzle, but they're in the box. So unfortunately, Rocco died, and all these pieces of the puzzle were not put together. And someone just put out all these pieces on the I'm table, and now we're trying to put them together. I, I'm just what I'm you know. saying is yeah. that. You, as the head of Parks and Rec, have gotten your, your hands in so many different things. Right. This, I'm saying, this is a company that will benefit. We will benefit, obviously, but this company will also benefit. And part of their responsibility is to meet with, to have met with, our planning department. So, it, you know, I, I hear you and I feel you, but you know what? I don't know who these... Um, I know it's Rocco's partner. Um, he needs to kind of get it together, and 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 you need to because remember, he's the leaseholder. He makes money. Yeah, I, 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 just, I agree. I, you know, I think everyone agrees with you, yeah. Alice. There's no doubt about it. There was clear miscommunication and yeah. and, and uh, if you want to say mismanagement from from the town's yeah. pers yeah, from the town's I, perspective to make sure that there was. Again, communication. They understood the process, yeah, possibly. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, once an issue was raised, we had Jimmy, we had Jim from Parks, we had John Tegeter, John Landy, Mike Quinn. We were all in my office, and we put, and within 45 minutes had a process that we were going to put forward, and that's what we've been following. Is that in writing, though, on a piece of paper? You know, or something? I just don't all the process and everything out. else. He well, no, he's he's out. doing a lot, but this is great. I mean, because he's really, you know, he's he's been yeah, I know it, very energetic, you know what, proactive, and it's been good. part of it is I think that the lease, the person that holds the lease isn't living up to his responsibility. But the problem would have been if 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 we didn't take the action we did and catch it when we did. Oh, I agree. Great. Then we would, then that, then oh, regardless of whose responsibility it mm -hmm. was, that project would have been stopped. Well, yeah, and dead stop. And, and also, you know what? We have to take some of the blame because on our, on our, as a town, in our processes, we're not followed, and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we should have, we should have known that. Well, I, I, you know, certainly, I'd like to look at their what their lease says. But um, you know, yeah, those agreements I have now. That, yeah. <laughs> but Jim, I can scan that and, and send it to yeah, you. Yeah, we tomorrow. have the agreements now. Yeah. Listen, but was, you know, was, you go, you want to go from here to somewhere else. 
there is a process. You open right? this door, that yeah. door, left turn, right turn. This is already open. known, you know, the requirement in a piece of paper. And if you give it one yeah. piece meal, then you're going to delay. I just don't want you to burn out. No, no, no. He's all right. No. He's, right. he's good. Don't all worry. All right, Jim. Jim did he's come good. at the end of Granite Knolls. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this all harkens back okay. to uh, when yeah. they started there cutting down the trees and we started having that issue. If we didn't have you, I don't know how we'd do. And I was happy to do it. You were there. No, you were there all the time. Um, <laughs> this all harkens let's, back let, to let, let, let's when, when um, they cut down all the trees. We had this person in and here. He was supposed to come back. And he was supposed to come back a month later with a plan. Correct. Okay. Correct. And whether someone told him, don't worry about it, don't do it, don't, I don't know what happened, but the plan wasn't followed. It's so what, six or eight now. months later. Yes, we are. That okay. They finally came back in. And, Jim, thank you for taking the lead on this whole Great. thing and, and, and getting it squared away. Like I say, now you got that box and the puzzle's hole in that box, you know, or at least semi-hole at this point where you're going to be able to go, I need A, and you're going to be able to go, here it is, Tom. Look, right, look, I got it for you. Just like a puzzle. I, mean, I helped him with the framework around. They got to fill it the inside. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. yeah. If you don't fill it the inside, I mean, I can only take you so it's far. Been a, it's, yeah. been a, it's been a tremendous effort. That's, that's coming soon. Uh, like Jim, I said, we're yeah, yeah. To, let's get let's get the, the DC uh, permit first. So, <laughs> Jim, I anything have a else from from I have the board for Jim? You know? Yes, Mr. Patel. Uh, let me see. I, think, I am uh, proud okay, of you. Go ahead. I am I, grateful. I'm just a little, yes, uh, he's done a fantastic job. Yeah. How many parking number? Uh, um, parking spots for okay. the golf we, course. We still need to. Uh, they need to do the calculations, but uh, we we. A, a rough number that we came up with for it was about 70, I believe. I, I was looking at some of the state laws, but really it's on them to do that. Uh, but I believe it's four spots per golf course, uh, for, excuse me, per hole on the golf course, excuse me. Uh, and then you need um, th uh, one spot per three, um, per three seats. Uh, so if you do that, I think it's 42 seats. Um, so it's, it's around 60, 70 spots that they'll need. And this is, again, why they're the before then. the planning board. Because they, they the planning know board is, or they're, they're the, that's the body that's going to help them sure. craft this, sure. make sure it's appropriate for the site, and ultimately give them uh, a, a, you know, their, their stamp of approval so that they can get that moving. Very good question. The uh, restaurant parking. And then what happened to those guys, the commuter? They're gonna be yeah. they were gonna be kicked out of there? The commuter lot is actually um can be included into the oh. parking plan. Oh. Uh so they are, um people will be allowed to park there and uh for overflow. Yeah. Uh, that actually helps uh their cause. And we did we but, and, and I got an email today from uh D O T regarding regarding that uh, commuter lot. I know there's a question, yeah. So I'll I'll circle back with you offline on that with the highway system. Get to the mall and park. A lot of people did park street. there. Yep. So we do. So anything further? Oh, yeah. We do have one more item that we need to address that was, came up in. Right. Anything else from Mr. Talbert? Mm -hmm. Jim, thank you. Fantastic thank you job. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate great, great, great job. So we do have one resolution um, that is not on the agenda because it was presented during closed, uh, and I will read it in its entirety for the board's consideration. Uh, this is in regards to uh, a new hire for our highway department. Be it resolved that Dennis M. Flynn of Carmel, New York, is hereby appointed laborer Job class code 0425-05 within the highway department to be paid from Yorktown CSEA salary schedule A, group 5, step 1, which is $44,150 annually. Be resolved contingent upon successful completion of a drug test and reference checks that Dennis M. Flynn will, work, will report to work at the highway department on February 24th, 2020. And this date will be used as the first date of appointment. Be it further resolved that this appointment is subject to a probationary period of not less than 12 nor more than 52 weeks, commencing on the first date of appointment on February 24th, 2020. I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And with that being said, that will be the conclusion of our okay, work session really meeting. Okay, Thank you, more. everyone, Are we for ending? attending. And we will, I'm sorry, a motion to. One minute. I was, I was close. Uh, and a motion, I'll have a motion to close. So moved. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good night. Thank you, Yorktown. 9.15.